Germany, the virus is spreading. XM202, the Opie and Anthony Show. All right, we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Trying to get some energy into this program. I'm just telling Anthony, man, I'm beat today. Usually we, well, bounce, we, usually we bounce back pretty good from a live broadcast, but uh, I don't know. Maybe because uh, we're out of shape for those damn things. Yeah, that was a little much yesterday. A lot of fun. In studio, Bill Burr sitting in for Jim Norton today. Jim Norton's going to be at uh, the Improv in West Palm Beach. Go to eataballet.com and get all your info, you, you plug Probably whores. the smell of urine that you had to inhale yeah. for like two hours. So what do you think? Really, that really ne- never went away. The, yeah. the smell of urine? Yeah, what did I think? Yeah, it was just all kinds of, uh, just, it was, it was bizarre. That was, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what, that guy I wetting know what himself. Yeah. I, I literally, much. yeah, I kind of walked around for about three hours later going, okay, I saw I love talking. <laughs> yeah, what? stuck on some, the, the place where a toe used to be. Yeah. For a fucking radio. <laughs> <laughs> just like, lady, how many cables do you have to wait? You could just buy one. How much? <laughs> so it's like 80, 90 bucks. <laughs> Yeah. That girl can never be kissed again. <coughs> no, ever. it's no way. No, it's, it's just not uh, enough mouthwash. You no, know it's funny. No. Uh, you know, we're we're building a whole new gang, and Bill Burr is going to be part of the whole new gang and stuff. Uh, we've been through this for so many years. To us, Bill, that was all just normal crap. And we're so jaded. We really are jaded. But to you, to to, to see it through your eyes, it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I was really just like... It's like you're complaining about the urine smell. We're like, well, yeah, it's a little... Yeah. It's it's not the greatest thing, but, you know, it's it's what we have to deal with, you know? It's like when the replacement sees his first decapitated Viet Cong, <laughs> yeah. and the rest of the guys are just walking past him, and you kind of look and throw up. Yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah I was definitely the new guy. Yeah, I, 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 you guys guy. had the, you know, the three-mile stare. Yeah. Like, nothing was bugging you. I was like, that guy's going to piss his pants. <laughs> nothing, at this point, nothing at this point surprises us. And we've seen a lot worse over a, a lot worse over the years. It's horrible to live like this. It really yeah, is. and then like every five seconds, someone was yelling out like the N word. It was just really. Oh uh, my God, you guys! Yeah, you bring up a good point. What a collection of just uh, racist, racist, awful people. And I'm Irish too, so that was like really. It's bad enough they're doing the drunk thing. Right. And it's like, all right, you know, once a year we act like idiots, but then that's hey, tell some Irish jokes, and every yeah. every every one of them was just like. I, I they, felt like I was in Boston in like 1970, and they were like, you know, <laughs> busting them in or something. It really was a bit much, people. Jesus yeah. Christ. Sea of, sea of ignorance. Yeah, they, they get on, uh, the guys are supposed to get up and tell some Irish jokes. You know, it's St. Paddy's Day, and like you said, it's the one day, you know, eh, make fun yeah. of the, the uh, stereotype that Irish like to drink. That's yeah. it. Get up there, a tell a few Irish jokes. couple jokes. Yeah. Little leprechaun jokes. Sure. sure why not? A few uh, bunch of kids jokes. You know, what, <laughs> yeah, whatever. But it, they, they just started ending with, like, these awful black jokes. And, and, and the people that are telling them would look up at us at the table, like, with a smile, like, we're going to go, yeah, yeah, thumbs up. Let's get <laughs> good this one. Guy, let's get this guy a radio. Yeah, yeah. good one. <laughs> you know, and they were just <coughs> not even the least bit funny, just this hate-filled I like uh, when someone else was actually going to tell an actual Irish joke, and right as he got to the punchline, someone would, would yell that out. Right. Yeah, yell out from the crowd. Yeah, like, why did the chicken cross the road? Never! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Why are you just like, yeah. why? It, just with the, no, no fun in it at all. This is what you should do. Whoever did that, you should take them down to, like, Hot 97. And be like, dude, tell that joke you told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell that one here. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell T- that one here. You tell look. it out front with a megaphone. Exactly. You see how brave you are, right? I bet you get a lot of laughs. I, I was surprised how much that the N word was flying around yesterday. Jeez. I don't know. People are uh, thinking, ah, satellite radio. Now we can really uh, tell everyone how we feel. Oh. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, there were there were hundreds of people in there yesterday. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. And when you think about it, it was probably at most ten people in there that were really uh, get, getting nasty with that. Yeah. You know, it was the same guys. Over yeah, that and one over guy with the cat in the hat, uh, Shamrock. Yeah, guy. yeah, he's a, a real favorite with the, the guy uh, black beat on community. Himself. He was great though. He was a liberal. He was just <laughs> he's a good one, yeah, very yeah, accepting. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is it true that guy took his underwear very off tolerant and, and threw it at Steve? Where is Martini? Are you kidding? Steve? No, I'm, the guy wouldn't be alive if that happened. I'm, I'm looking. The guy at, would not be alive. I'm looking at the Hard Rock wrap up, and uh, one of the things on here. 
Where's Steve, Nathaniel? He's coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, but Nathaniel, uh, you know, he can cover it. He wants a maritime. No, I saw the guy do it, so. You did. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was oh, a, was that a snip? Were you being snippy with me? No, I was saying. I was no, no I, I saw the guy do it, so. <laughs> no. It was so, like, so shut up, Anthony. No, it was so, and then <laughs> I got distracted because the mic stand was coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. you're getting a little no, snooty with I have me. No over attitude. <laughs> we, sh- <laughs> we share a drink at the bar yesterday, all of a sudden we're, you know. You know what? He's now, telling me now, so. Now, when Ben gets fired, I think we're going to have to move Danny up. Nice. Danny. Good. Nathaniel, uh, talking down to you a little bit, Anthony. A little bit. I felt but like you were... You pretty much want to say, calm down, Anthony. I got this covered. Yeah. Relax. So, shut up. We're just relax, dude. He's misdirected anger. He's yeah, thinking was. about his dad or something like Maybe that. Maybe something. Yeah, something was there, but... I'm never right. coming in here again. All right, so the guy uh, pisses his pants. That was the highlight for me. That was... Well, I don't know. There were so many good ones. Oh, the highlight. The, the whore getting yelled at while she's trying to get info out was really that funny, too. That was oh, really yeah. good. We had a, a brand new sponsor join us yesterday. Uh, very happy to have them on board, and and some l- lovely lady was trying to tell people about it, and she could not get a word in. The animals in the crowd would not leave her alone. <laughs> it was just a, it was a, it was a, a yelling and a cheering that you only get watching a rape on a pinball uh, machine. It's the same type of <laughs> mob mentality. Yeah, fucker. You know, that whole anger thing. She couldn't get anything out. She even said, no. you guys want to hear a sex story? Yeah. No! No! They just yelled, no, we want to kill you. She's like, don't you want to hear about the politicians that get blowjobs? No! no! Oh, shit. What an, <laughs> and she keeps turning that. around. Come on, you just got to gotta see the end yeah. of the story. Yeah. She yeah. was Go turning on. around to us, pretty much With saying to fat. us, oh, God, that fat that was drooping. There were so many little lines. I don't even know if a lot of them got through because there there were so many mics on in the crowd, but I don't know. I I told Billy, uh, Bill, I go, uh, she needs a bra for her back. And then and you had the line of the day. You're like, from the back, she looks like she's... From the front, she looked like she was 26, and yeah. from the back, she looked like she was 52. <laughs> <laughs> they just seemed to pull everything around back on her, I yeah, guess, yeah. to oh. tighten up the front. <laughs> yeah, she had a body lift. <laughs> yeah, just all around. <laughs> leave all the crap in the back, sir. <laughs> right, just leave it all the there. the front first. We'll deal with <laughs> right. the back later. <laughs> I all right, so get, the back. Getting to the guy that pissed his pants for the MiFi, we got video of that that's going to go up uh, later today or sometime over the weekend. Steve's yeah, got a lot definitely. to do, obviously. He's going to be working all weekend. Uh, so the guy takes a leak, then he passes out, then he takes his underwear off. What what happened? Apparently, part of his cleaning up process was removing his urine-soaked underwear. Yeah, one of the Sorry. first. Yeah, the the first thing he did was he got ushered into that little back room and he got he got got rid of his uh, his underpants. And uh, I didn't know that he kept them. I thought he threw them away. Yeah. But he held on to them, and they hit me in the back of the head as I'm walking up the stairs to Whoa. do to something. God. Is that why Are your hair is you golden today? Yes, that's exactly me? why the hair is golden. The, <laughs> the guy kept bugging us like, "Oh, where's my MiFi? Where's my MiFi?" Oh, by the way, I also helped him fill out his, his uh, paperwork, and I yeah. found out his maiden name is the C word. <laughs> he was having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only our listeners are yeah. bunch of yeah. assholes. Oh, my, I guess I, I want to know how the guy <laughs> is still breathing after throwing urine-soaked underwear at the back of your head. I I felt him hit my head, and I'm like, what the hell just hit me? And I look in the back, and I see this crumpled up black cloth, and he's looking at me, pointing, going, ha 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 ha. And I, I'm just immediately thinking of 14 different ways to snap this asshole's neck. Yeah. And all I want to do is kill him. And then immediately I just start thinking of, oh, it's John's place. It's you know Johnny Hard Rock. He's been so cool to us. I don't want to beat the shit out of a guy in, in this place. I don't want to do it. But I'm immediately thinking of dragging this guy into the back room and just punching him until he yeah. dies. Right. And I'm like, piss-soaked underwear at your yeah. head is a good reason. To beat I someone. really, I was just You're walking up to beat him with the prize. I yeah, should have beat him with a my fi yeah. <laughs> until it's destroyed. But I, I was just flaring at that point. I really wow. wanted to kill flaring him. Flaring or flaming? Um, I, well, the boots were flaming, so yeah, both. I'm amazed That's that a, you showed restraints. Dude. I know. I, I am totally amazed. Wanted to watch him die horribly. The, the fan boards are having a lot of fun with a shot of you staring at uh, Stark and Patty's boobs like they're the nicest boobs you've yeah, ever you seen. Yeah, you kind of are making. They caught you in a weird. That's uh, what sucks with that dude, camera. I don't know. I, <laughs> I've never seen uh, more flash uh, flash bulbs. Uh, flash flash bulbs <laughs> in the 30s. I know. I've, I've never Don't seen... Don't take pictures of Kong. I love upset him. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen more flashes go off at a live appearance in my life. 
And they, they just go through hundreds and hundreds of pictures and I find saw a few lighting <laughs> gunpowder on boards <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to get enough light in the place. And then they sure. find the ones where you look really ridiculous, and, yeah. and those are the ones they post. Of course. But there's one of you, you're just staring at Starker Patty naked, and it's almost like you're drooling, like, I need those. Yeah, you of look course. really bad in it. Of course. You know, 24 shots in a second, they find the one where my eyes drift over, yeah, you know, yeah, and I'm yeah. not looking disgusted. Fine, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> All right. It's getting a little defensive. Yeah, isn't I think, it? I think there's something there. I think there's some anger in there from getting hit in the back of the head with urine soaked yeah. underwear and find, not being able to do anything. About find it. me a person who's not going to get immediately furious after getting blasted with piss Jim soaked Norton. underwear. Jim Norton. Oh. Oh. Jimmy, okay, that's, that's true. It. That's true. He'd have turned around. He would have had that dreamy look in his eyes. <laughs> you had oh, laid on his back and wrung it out in his face. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey, your crew is getting uh, clips today for us? Yes. All right. Yeah. We're, we're starting with uh, Pat from Minaki. The, the star, well. I was going to say the star, but... There's, One there's, of the stars, Obi. It was star-studded The yesterday. board getting yelled at, the guy pissing his pants, the uh, the Pat from Minaki stuff, great. Mm-hmm. Starker Patty was eh, but fun to watch, right? Yeah. So we got audio of Pat from Minaki at, uh, at the live broadcast yesterday. It's the famous make-out session. Ah, uh, this was uh, the chick wanted a MiFi. So she decided she was going to make out with... Uh, Pat from Munaki. She had a nice set. Anyone else notice that? Uh, yeah, she did. And all, all, as she she went all, she went all out too. Yeah, and as she really she's talking did. about what's going to happen, and, and you know we're we're kind of interviewing her. I just watched her just nips get harder and harder and harder. You I'm think like, she was getting a little turned on with the whole thing? Something was going on from Pat. Maybe the excitement of doing something in front of everyone, in but front of something a big was crowd. something was definitely going on. I'm like, whoa, what's what's you up gotta there? You got to admit that dude Pat he, for a fact he was a clean fat guy. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Showered, bathed. He's a uh, he's an all right guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It wasn't like uh, he enjoyed dirty it. fat guy. Dirty fat guy is really yeah, bad. Dirty fat guy yeah. would have been real bad. It's usually he, an odor coming off a dirty fat guy. He enjoyed his moment, and it was only supposed to be thirty seconds, and the girl was too drunk to know that we were just like, okay, <laughs> ten oh, that went on seconds for like, to go. That went on for like two minutes. It was already a well over a minute, and she had no idea. But why then was Pat? Pat was such an idiot. He's kissing her, making out with her. Obviously, we're over the 30-second mark that the girl agreed to. She's still going at it. Pat starts, he stops kissing her, turns to us, and he's like, yeah, what about the time? <laughs> right. Like, Pat, <laughs> Pat don't this, worry about this it. This is the only action you're going to get in the whole decade. Enjoy three, it. Three times he stopped kissing her, turned around, and was like, why, why are we still going? <laughs> yeah. well, he oh, did cop a feel seconds. at the end of it, though. Oh, grabbed a tit, grabbed a big handful of ass, yep. and then he started pushing himself. He's, he's like thrusting his pelvis against her. <laughs> <laughs> it's really disturbing to watch. And that video will be up on the website as well. Yeah, yeah, about minute four, he realized the opportunity. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, wait a second. Yeah. I could grab booby here. I'm just going to start feeling her up. <laughs> All right, let's go to the audio here and check it out. Here a little. If you want me to stop it, just raise your hand. All right. Right when your lips touch. Here we go. Stick your tongue in her mouth, Pat. Stick your tongue in her mouth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> cheering it Back on. Back one second. All right, two seconds. Work the, there you go, Pat. Work the hands. Three. Work the hands, Pat. Wait. The, the audience. See, we love when the audience just, uh, they do it themselves. They just start all their own chants. I, I, I've always loved that about our, our, uh, our fans. But here's the girl, you know, wanting to win a MiFi, actually throwing Pat a bone here. He hasn't made out with a girl in ten years, he said. Ten years. <laughs> And he's finally getting a little. And the crowd, to help out, starts chanting, whore, whore, whore. whore. I thought that was the soundtrack to The Accused. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. It sounds the exact same thing. Up to the boob. <laughs> he's going to fuck her right there. Oh, oh. oh yeah, nice. Pat. Nice. We are halfway wow. there. We're halfway there, almost. Uh, now we're halfway there, Anthony. Keep going. Yeah. get a DVD player, too. Wow, Pat. <laughs> Unbelievable. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, great. Wow, Pat. She's a Pat's pulling, her, pulling her into him. That's they great. actually just stopped. I think it's a restart, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the matter, Pat? Come on, Pat. Fucking keep kissing her. Why? You, you, you want us to yell time? To. What's wrong with you, you goody two seconds? <laughs> 16 seconds. 16 seconds. Low job there, Chad. No, don't put your hand on top of her head, Pat. All right. What do you care what time it is, What's Pat? What's the matter with you? Pat went right back in. Pat, we're, we're helping you out, Pat. 
Yeah, Jesus, you're cock blocking your Oh, he's, he's grabbing. He's grabbing boom. <laughs> he's grabbing nice. Boom. <laughs> All right, there you go. 30 seconds. Wow. Right. Wow. 29, 29 seconds. seconds. All right, get the mic back here. There's a minute and a half. What, yeah. How did uh, what do you think of Pat's technique? His kissing. Excuse me? What do you think of Pat's <laughs> technique? How was it? It was wonderful. He was a great kisser. Good job, wow. Pat. Pat? Pat, how did that feel? Uh, great. Pat, lift your front of your pants up and show the crowd. Are you sporting? No, he's diabetic. That blood flow is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's why, you know, that's why my mom is really proud of my radio career. <laughs> I know. That we can cheer on uh, something like that. I don't even call my mom anymore. I don't want to know. <laughs> I just that's don't want to know. My man. mother was so excited when we uh, finally got jobs again. <laughs> yeah. And we got uh, here on XM Satellite Radio. I hooked up the whole family with satellite radios, and they listened. And now when I go over there... They barely discuss my radio career or the show or anything. She says things like, yeah, I was listening when I got in the car, you know, in between the time that I put it in reverse to back out of the driveway and hit drive. I was listening. Oh, and that whole time I was listening. And she, you know, I heard you say good morning and then I had to change it because you guys get started. And there's just now it's just an embarrassment to her. I might as well just be like a, a, somebody arrested for child molestation or a crack she's dealer. She's probably telling her friends that she's yeah. making making up careers. Yeah. Oh, that's what he does now. No, radio. He got out of that a while ago. No. Now he's you know he, he's working with computers or something now. Molesting children. Molesting on the side. children. <laughs> yeah. That's, anything but doing that. Anything but this. She can't listen to stuff like this. And I knew. Oh, they're grabbing. Bu- Yo, he's grabbing her boob. Right. What the What the fuck? Are we, did you junior high? And that's how we try to keep it clean, by the way. Instead of saying, you know, he's grabbing her tit. Yeah, of course. We think if we say boob, we're still, you know. Oh, we're class in the we're, show up. Yeah, we we still have a lot of class. Oh, we're despicable. Uh, we have a live studio <laughs> audience uh, today, by the way. Oh, that's good. Now they roll the uh, releases in, in various forms. I yeah. see Poe's doing it now. I forgot where this uh, couple's from. They're from Omaha or something, right? Omaha? And they, I don't know, they kind of flew in for the uh, the live broadcast, sort of. They yeah. had other things to do in New York, but they decided, ah, we'll go this time so we can see the boys live. So Yeah, they came up to the table. We were signing pictures and stuff after the show yesterday. Came up, said they were from Omaha. And uh, Opie, looking right down at the girls' cleavage, yeah. uh, invited them to come in today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the fact is, if you were a fat pig, you you wouldn't be sitting there. I mean, that's no. the reality. So... So that's a good sign. Because other people said could, they'd like to come down today, and we're, and we're like, well, no. uh, stay away. So Yeah, cleavage usually helps. Yeah, cool. that's what it was. Opie just looked, didn't even look at her face, just looking right through the chair. <laughs> come on down tomorrow. <laughs> Pat from Monaki, what's up, oh. Pat? Hey, guys. Hey, hey guys. Listen, no uh, d- Just to let you know, I'm uh, about 100 feet from Teterboro Airport, and the signal's fine. Of course it is. <laughs> All right, good. He's doing a cell phone check for us. Thank you. Thank you for that, Pat. So, Pat, yeah, did, no problem. did you go home and rub one out after all that action you got in front of everyone? Well, I don't have a great memory, so I, I'll wait for them to post some pictures on, on uh, whack bag. He's got he's to look at pictures of himself in order to get off. How Very do you good. I photoshopped someone... myself out. I didn't hear that. He said he's going to photoshop himself out. Oh, there you go. Was uh, Now, Pat, uh, that was the first time in, like, ten... You said 10 years? Uh, at least. At least 10 oh years. Now, be realistic. How long was it before this that you had a girl in any way, shape, or form? Oh, boy. Uh, well, I had a, an official girlfriend when I was 13. 13, you had a, an official girlfriend. And then after I had, that? I had a pro when I was 17. Of, all right, he went to a hooker at 17. So he started off good. What happened? Yeah. yeah. And then it kind of went downhill after that. Maybe it's... Maybe a couple at a bachelor party in my 20s. A bachelor party type thing in your 20s. And how old are you? 41. So you're you're talking probably closer to 15 years. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a eunuch at this point. <laughs> when was the last time you stuck a, your tongue down a girl's throat? You should know him. Uh, probably somewhere in my 30s. Yeah, you in said a bar. That. I, I used to work at a bar. Yeah. I was a bouncer and a VJ and all that stuff. Oh, so you probably got some drunk uh, down yeah. there and kind of made out oh, with yeah. her. You well, say a VJ? Yeah, did you say oh. a VJ? VJ. Or DJ? No, VJ. We had like a video. We played videos. Oh, okay. Far in uh, Clifton called Connections. All right. Well, you have fun yesterday? 
Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was exactly a year ago that I went into the hospital to have my toe lopped off. Well, exactly a year ago. There you go. Yeah, good I went in on St. Patrick's Day. Very good uh, one-year anniversary thing to do then, have a girl lick where the toe used to be. <laughs> yeah, what did they do yeah. with what did they do with the toe? I th I think they told me uh, that they do they uh, examine it. They uh, they do it like an autopsy on the toe. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying toe. throwing it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Put it in the garbage. It. Down the garbage disposal. Play a little Nerf hoop with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Was it it was really in bad shape though before they cut it off, right? Oh yeah. Well, actually they. Cut it off two weeks later because it, it, they're trying to get my uh, my sugar down to save the toe. But no, it was my sugar was four sixty five. Hey Pat, how come how come in the disgusting picture of your foot in the hospital, it looks like your your foot was split all the way up to the toe? Ugh. Because there's like a, a couple bones in your toe. They took out the one just below the the toe. It's sort of it's sort of like a a tooth root. They had to take the bone out uh, to, to get the toe off. Yeah, yeah. tarsal. Oh yes, tarsal. tarsal. Very Flanges. good. They took out yes. the. Yes. They took out the root of his toe. Oh, the <sighs> toe root, so a new one wouldn't grow back. Yeah, I guess so. He's like a lizard. My wisdom toe. <laughs> his wisdom <laughs> toe. <laughs> and then what? Like what happened? I I I don't know much about what happens in these situations. What happened to your toe? And, and when did you look at it and say, "Uh oh, they're gonna have to cut this off"? Like you obviously OD'd on some sugar, and then what happened to your toe? Well, is it, well, I, it was like what I told you that I that I was trimming the nail with a uh, butter knife because I I don't own a oh. nail clipper. <sighs> oh. I just I just did that. It got a little red. It's gotten a little red before, but then it always heals up. But with the diabetes, you don't heal from stuff. Oh. And it just got a little red, and it didn't get better in like a week. So. St. Pat's Day, I walked into the So then you moved up to a steak knife? <laughs> they decided to hack it off. Oh. No. Ooh. That's, that's oh. wonderful. All right. Pat, hold on the line for a second, okay? Sure. Because we now want to play the audio of Pat uh, getting that toe job, Anthony. Yeah, okay. So now he, he pulls out his uh, his uh, his four-toed foot. His Fred Flintstone foot, as they were calling that, that it. That was really funny, whoever <laughs> came up with that. He sat down. Uh, the girl kind of lifted his foot up. Yeah. Face level, the crowd had a good view. Yeah, and um, they, we no hesitation the word. on her yeah. part. None whatsoever. She didn't even make like a grimace type face where she was like, "Oh, I can't believe I got to do this." She dove in with gusto. <laughs> she had no problem. Well, she had a few in her too, you know. And Man. she got a MiFi. Ooh, wow! Pe people love getting their MiFi's. They Anthony. certainly she, do. She really was unflappable. Like when people would yep. chant and stuff. They go, whore, whore. She's like, I don't care. No, I'm not a whore. I'm I know I'm not, so I'm, whatever. I'm doing it for the radio. Just they doing it for the radio. Want. Yeah, she had, a, she was fine with it. Definitely fine with it, and uh, and she wasn't one of those people where it was like the clock is running and is it time yet? Like she would just keep going until we said, all right, mm -hmm. you're done. All right, well check this out. The video is going to be up on the websites uh, later on this weekend. Whenever you're ready, let her rip. Let her rip. Start the go. timer. Start the timer. Oh, the timer, yeah, yep. of course. And right when you touch. Go. Go. Oh. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Oh, oh God. Oh. oh, my God. She's oh. working over oh. Pat oh. Pataki's foot. The oh. horror. Oh. The horror. Oh. She's sticking, oh. she's sticking oh. each toe in her mouth all the way down. Oh, my God. Oh. Deep throating his toes, <laughs> wow. Anthony. Oh, my she's God. She's working over the area. Let's see. Uh, this so woman far. can never She's kiss getting hoof and mouth head. disease. <laughs> Oh my God! Now she's oh, 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 God. Now she's pretending the big toe is a penis. Yeah, she's kind of doing a, a BJ. I'm gonna blow a load of toe jam in her face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now she's working over the area that used to have a toe. Anthony. Right, right. She's a hey, lick right underneath. Oh. Lick underneath the nail a little. Lick underneath the nail. God, oh, shut God. up, oh. Jimmy. They're horrified, Anthony. They're horrified. I'm getting They're hot. horrified. Deep throat that big toe. Look at oh. Jimmy's getting hard over here. Yeah. Nice. Why are you? Oh. Why are you getting toed oh. like this? I'd like to have my toes licked. How is that feeling, Pat? We're we're only halfway. I here. got another toe here. Get that stump. Get that stump again. Oh. Lick, lick his wound. Yeah, lick where there used to be a toe. Lick that diabetic. Yeah, he's stump. got the amputated one in his pocket. <laughs> I'd be happy to lick your wound later. <laughs> Um, you know what? Oh. That open hatchet wound. <laughs> All right. Did you used to host shows in upstate New York? Oh. The reason I recognize those jokes. <laughs> All right. I Ready for your next act? I think uh, she uh, won herself a high five. Oh. Yeah, let's wow. Yeah. yeah, that's a standing ovation right there. Wow. Yeah, she had really good uh, You're happy now? You're a whore.
She had real good technique on the big toe, Ann. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. How did that feel? How was the technique? Was that okay? It was, uh, your technique looked fine. Technique. Thank you. Thank you. She wants critique. That's how yeah. much of a sport she How is. is my technique? Should I do it again? Yeah, well, I'm not sure how the technique was because I've never seen any other women licking where a toe used to be <laughs> yes, on the foot. Exactly. I mean, how is my technique? She didn't throw up. I think your technique was great. <laughs> oh, man. I just love how he delivers his jokes with just complete lack of confidence. Oh, I know. <laughs> complete. He is the worst. <laughs> and then he tells him, I he got goes, a couple more jokes. <laughs> yeah, can I lick your wound? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. We're going to get an answer to a question today. No one's ever really enjoyed my comments in life. <laughs> <laughs> Shane from North Carolina. Shane? Yeah. What's up? Hey, what's up, man? I was just calling to uh, let you know, first of all, I love you guys. I've been listening since uh, you first come on XM. And, uh, Thank you. going to let you know what they do with the uh, <laughs> amputated limbs there. Uh, I was an embalming apprentice in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, and uh, kind of got to see on the inside, you know, what... Uh, what actually happened? Um, wow! They have these limbs, and they uh, that they amputate legs, feet, hands, whatever. Yeah. And uh, they stack this stuff up in the morgue cooler, kind of like cordwood. Mm-hmm. And uh, then at specific times, they go back and uh, uh, cremate all this stuff. Oh, they cremate it in a huge pile. Do you have specific uh, days, like I've leg day? I've never actually seen seen them cremate. I was just leg day and arm day. day. Yeah. <laughs> It's leg day but, today. We've got a pile of legs out there. <laughs> but you know they've got a they got a morgue cooler, and it's specifically for amputated limbs. So there's limbs, when you open limbs. the thing up, I was in there one day getting the body and opened the door up by mistake, and you look in and there's limbs. just black or, or blue bags kind of wrapped up with names on them. Wow. Tags and stuff. Do you ever put one in your sleeve and go to shake someone's hand with it and then let go of it and let it slide <laughs> out your sleeve? <laughs> hey, uh, give me no. that. <laughs> no, never done that. All right. Well, thanks for that info, Shane. A little, yeah, mor- no little morgue humor. A little morgue humor, right. Yeah. Why not? Little wacky oh. guys around the morgue. That would be good. It's like, what is it? Is it arm day or leg day today? Which limb, limb are we burning today? You know, every profession has a sense of humor, so I'm sure they do some crazy stuff in the morgue. I hear they're pretty wild, those morgue uh, undertaker people, you know, with their sense of humor. You know, it's that whole dark humor yeah, you know thing. They do. I hear things. I just hear things. I hear they're pretty wild. Oh, what you know, website do, have you been going to? Do it, enough. I do my research, <laughs> and uh, there there are a lot of jokes that go on in the. Uh, Forget yes. Aristotle <laughs> and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor Anthony. I'm not a professor in this case. <laughs> well, I'm just saying I've heard things that, that in order to deal with what they have to deal with, they they kind of have this Bill, dark humor. Let me explain something because you're you're sort of new to the program, you know. We're we're getting, <laughs> you, know that we're getting you on board. <laughs> We're getting you aboard. You're you're looking at a guy that knows a little bit about everything. Oh everything. God, he's my dad. So about now everything. So now uh, I forgot who uh, came up with this theme. It's great. I forgot the guy's name already. Someone's yeah. yelling at the radio right now. I, I can't hear you. Though. Professor I'm sorry. Anthony. Forget <laughs> Aristotle and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor Anthony. That jingle annoys the shit out of me, especially where he <laughs> slurps a little bit of spit up after Socrates. That's P niggity. Oh, that was a P niggity. Uh, Listen to how creation. he slurps, like he's spitting right after Socrates. Forget Aristotle and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor you hear that? Anthony. What's, what's, what's that? <laughs> it's excitement for his first recording gig. All oh. right, Pat, we're gonna let you go. I guess they uh, they piled up your limb with a bunch of others. It, it seems. And, you think uh, a little toe yeah, the, the is sitting there? The reason I was checking there? the phone, uh, checking the time at uh, 30 seconds, is because uh, that that four plays a little long for me. You think that you think at that point? You think his little toe is the top of a pyramid of limbs? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be the smallest thing right, so that they have. So that on top of the limbs. They plopped that little uh, toe little up there. Little toe, and then they were ready to cremate. Like there's legs, <laughs> <and> arms, <laughs> and then maybe some arms, hands yeah. and feet. Yeah. And then fingers. You talk about and then little ear, little ear lobes. Ear lo- <laughs> you, you talk <laughs> about ripped off in bar fights. Yeah. Ear lobes. And then right on top of that, a little raisinette-like toe just <laughs> plopped yeah, on you, top. You talk about more humor. you got to think, well, yeah. well, we'll pile it up into a pyramid, and we'll put, uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll put his uh, little toe at the top there.
<laughs> is really well, name is Pinky. Yeah. <laughs> How about one more joke before you go? Hey, well, the reason it was uh, we're banging teeth uh, at at one point, and my tongue was searching inside her mouth for her tongue, but she was like she was like Clara Peller from the Burger King commercials. I don't think she had a tongue. Uh, Peller from the Burger King commercials. So, yeah, well, little Dennis Carter Miller on me there, man. Tongue cancer, and they lopped off. Oh, the she had tongue cancer. Was it was it so her like, or was it the woman tongue. from uh, uh, the uh, Throw Mama from the Train movie? Yeah, that isn't Clara Peller. Oh, oh Clara Peller's the Where's the oh, Beef really woman. Sucked. All right, well, Pat. wow. And my Thank God, I know a little bit about everything. Pat was handing out his own CDs yesterday. He has a CD of uh, every time we talked about him on the show. And he was handing them out to the fans. Yeah, he was actually handing them out. He made a cover for it and everything. <laughs> it was handing out his appearances on this show to the crowd. And there was a pile of them in front of me when we were signing the pictures. And no one was taking them because they thought you had to buy them. So I had to write free CDs, and people still weren't taking them. I, I think, a, I, I think uh, FedEx from OAVirus.com, yeah. I think he's going to feature Pat's CD on his site. Wow, that's the something, huh? <laughs> there gonna, you go, Pat. Just a bunch Ooh. of boring radio, one clip after another. Things going to take <laughs> off. All right, Pat. Hey, yesterday's the start of volume two. Uh, uh. All right, thanks, Pat. Have a good weekend. This is the worst. All right. Stay away from that sugar, all right? All right, yeah. All right. Let's uh, say hi to Mike in New York. He says the limb guy was wrong. Mike? Yeah. What's up? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, that redneck that called from uh, South Carolina? <laughs> yeah. He's full of crap. Because they don't stack up the toes in the morgue. Well, uh, arms and legs. That's stupid. I'm a I'm a surgical PA in uh, upstate in New York here. Yeah. And uh, Pat, I hate to say it, but Pat was right. They uh, they don't do an autopsy, but they do a biopsy on the limbs. Uh huh. To uh, to you know inspect the inside, see what exactly what's wrong. Yeah, but then what do they and do they with throw like them a... away with the biological waste? What do they do with an arm? With an arm? Yeah. What would they, they... do with an arm? They do a biopsy on it, and then it goes with the biological waste. Yeah, but what happens to biological waste? It goes in a dumpster. Yeah, I know. Where does the dumpster go? God, yeah, take like me to the end of teeth. This. Yeah, take me to the end of the line when they're done it, with it the goes, arm. It goes to the same place used needles go, and the same where place is that go. place? <laughs> Just say you don't a, know or a tell beach us. On, in Jersey. <laughs> I don't, it probably gets dumped in the ocean. I don't fucking know. He has know. no idea where they end up. But, but, but he I knows that say, redneck is I, full of shit. Yeah, hey, hey, dude. Enough. Mike, 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 I want, I want to tell you something. He doesn't know this, but that arm could go into the dumpster with the needles. They, they could end up at a, a, a morgue or at a, a whatever they call it, a funeral parlor. Yeah. Uh, in that room that the redneck was talking about. And then they burn hey, and then they, they burn them. You have no hey, idea. Real, real quick, uh, if anybody's ever going to get anything amputated... Something to make you feel better before it happens would be to uh, go to the improv in West Palm Beach. Punch ah, it out. Ah, there you go. That was to get really, really, it was really, awful. really bad. Really bad. It was awful. All right, we're going to take a break. Bill Burr sitting in for Jim Norton today. Jim mm -hmm. Norton was supposed to call by now. We'll try to get him on the uh, on the show today. Anthony, Drew Boogie stopped by for uh, with a brand-new Stark and Patty promo. Want to debut it on the show today? Oh, yes. Starker Patty, kind of a star yesterday during the live broadcast. She yeah. reenacted her crawling naked across the floor thing with the Ugh. crusty the clown mask on. That was horrific. There's a video of that that will be going up on the websites as well this Another weekend. Another proud moment. This is Drew Boogie? Yeah. He's great. He takes clips and stuff, throws them together with music, and uh, yeah, this is a good one. All right, let's check this out as we go to break. <laughs> You know, I'm starting to get hot. Oh. You know, I'm starting to get hot. Oh, no. I'm going to give up my virginity. I'm a sport. Maybe take a little cock right into my mouth. It must hurt. Maybe taking it in the rear. Maybe bang me up the ass. Oh. Patty, Patty, oh. Patty. That's what they call me. Patty, oh. Patty, oh. Patty. She's a freak. Patty, Patty, oh. Patty. That's what they call me. Patty. Freak. What do you want me to do? Uh, I'm not going to be facing the wolf. What do you want me to do? I've always wanted a juicy cock. Put it between the boobs. I'm into the TFing. Put it between the boobs. Put it in the pit. Put it in the pit. It's my favorite oral treat. 
might stay for eating cock. I'm hungry for a big fat juicy cock. That's the right. Whack your bag. Whack your bag. Whack your bag. Whack your bag. Start Shoot off. your big wad of cum right into my mouth. Oh. Hey, hey, oh. Hey. That's what they call me. Hey, oh. hey, hey. She's a freak. Hey. Me. Oh God! After I suck you off, I want you to bang me up the ass. I'm hungry for a hard nailed cock. Stick your huge cock in my tight ass. That's scaring me. I take it in the rear. I'm a freak. That's what I was taught. I got a big juicy cock from Ben the other day. Oh, I like the banana. Oh God! I like the banana. I'm a freak. I enjoy having sex with a guy. I enjoy cock in my mouth. I enjoy cock between the boobs. I enjoy cock in my tight ass. Hey, hey, oh, hey. That's what they call me. Hey, oh, hey, hey. She's a freak. Hey. April 1st and 2nd, I'll be at our governor's in uh, Long Island. So if you want to deal with that horrible LIE, come out to the show. I swear to God, I wish they'd blow that goddamn highway up. It's the worst. Next time we're attacked, attack the LIE, Southern State and the Belt, all of Long Island. Uh, April 1st and 2nd, come see uh, Midget Finger Boss. I guess I'm supposed to be funny doing these things, aren't I? Yeah. Let's do it! The OP Family Show. So be it. Fred no more. To the two pieces. To prepare for war. So be it. Settle the score. Talk to me again for the war that you will hear evermore. Yeah. Yeah. I love Metallica. I hung out with Bill at the Metallica show with Jim Norton. And him waiting to get a picture yeah, was longer than the concert. It became a legendary night. I finally saw firsthand what Jim goes through to get these celebrity photos. <laughs> he uh, turns into a little kid, and he doesn't realize he's he's kind of famous, and that if he just would kind of get a little aggressive, we could have yeah. been out of there within five minutes. Instead, he sat there like... Like an eighth grader. Like an eighth grader, right. At his first concert. And, and then you and I were making fun of him. He's like, dude, you're going to blow it for him. You're going to blow it. Relax. Yeah. They throw people out like you guys. Calm down. Oh, just yeah, he, he had a whole I'm thing. like, what are we doing? Relax. You relax. No, just, you relax. They just played a long show. They're really tired. I'm, oh, I'm just going to stand here. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> going to stand here for hours. And then remember he had his hooded uh, sweatshirt on. And, and every... Am I exaggerating when I say every five minutes, maybe even less, he kept checking the camera to make sure... Kept every, resetting it. Kept resetting yeah. it. Because he had, crazy. I guess he had the the the, uh, the lens perfect or whatever. So yeah, he had to keep uh, setting it. He's he's insane, absolutely insane with wow. the celebrity photos. What's up? Instant feedback, insane. Most instant feedback we've ever gotten for a song ever. Uh, but first, I gotta read from Severed Limb in New York City. Uh, funeral parlor. What year is this? 1947. <laughs> I said, I said flash bulbs. You, you said funeral parlor. <laughs> the parlor. I know. Uh, what do I know? She and was then, in the parlor. She looked gorgeous. The, the parlor. She looks so natural. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> and then I'm just reading feedback after feedback <laughs> of uh, Drew Boogie. Didn't they used to call it the parlor on the Munsters? Where uh, oh, yeah. Herman <laughs> Munster worked, uh, Lily, I'm going down to the parlor. <laughs> the parlor. Yeah, well, I don't know. What What do they call them now? A funeral home? Home, I guess. Is yeah. it a home? That's what it says on all the, the signs. The parlor. We were just more focused on what they did with the toe. I didn't yeah, yeah, we didn't yeah. Really. I wasn't really concentrating on what the hell they call the joint. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa, here we go. Uh, more Drew, more Drew, more Drew. Get him on the payroll. Absolutely the best Drew Boogie remix ever. That rocks. Uh, Stalker Patty is getting me hot in the song. This tune, dare I say, incredible catchy. Probably the best uh, fan-made song ever. Stalker Patty song, great. Uh, new Drew Boogie, funny as hell. But my cock has vanished into my body like a turtle head. <laughs> it's very catchy, though. Oh, my God, this is a song is funny. Just got hushed by my manager for laughing real loud while I was listening with my headphones on. And uh, Drew Boogie rocks. Stalker Patty song, unbelievable. You know, we Flawless, if you ask me. Drew Boogie in studio. What's up, Drew? 
I didn't work out like I thought it would. Why? Why I that? thought I thought everybody I thought they would hate it. I thought it would be so anti hot that it would be a song that would torture the listeners. You know, something that you would annoy no. them with like the banana you know song. No, it is. It's ca- it's, it's so really catchy. catchy. Yeah, it's like goes, a real song. That chorus part is yeah, really good. Yeah, when she goes, uh, that's what they hook. call me. Yeah. That's what they call me. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that awful voice of hers. <laughs> that's what they call me. Hey, Drew, a week from today is our last live show before vacation. You want to mm. spin live in studio again? I'll bring the stuff in, yeah. All right. Uh, Drew Boogie will spin live in studio a week from today. See how we just developed a show as we do a show? That's <laughs> it. That's the beauty. Yeah. A week from today, well, it's the goof-off show. We're known for the goof-off show just mm-hmm. before vacation because we can't even be bothered anymore. We've At that point, we know we've just given them a lot of great radio. We yeah. just want to get out of there and on vacation. We give up. So it'll be, uh, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun a week from today. Mm-hmm. All right. Anthony, more highlights from yesterday's live broadcast. I got the Sex It's Girl. The, the, the crowd was just brutal. Sex It's, S-E-X-I-T-S dot com, I guess. That had they... to be at least 15 minutes her trying to tell that story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the funniest part about it was when she would turn around, and, and because the crowd was so bad, she'd turn and look at us like, could you shut these people up? Like, we have a shot of shutting those animals up. Like, we could do anything to keep them from yelling at her. Animals. Animals. Before I go to this clip, someone's on the line here. Chris, I think he's the guy that pissed himself. Hey, Chris, what's up? Hey, what's going on? How are you? Uh, all right. <laughs> wow, you don't even sound like the same guy. How's your uh, girlfriend, no, yeah, man? I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm just uh, looking for my ID. I think someone took it yesterday. Like yeah, you couldn't possibly have lost it in your drunken stupor, right? Somebody took it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Someone maliciously stole it from me. Stole your ID. How you feeling today? Um, I'm a, a, a little uh, sticky. You, d- did you shower? Oh, uh, no. Oh. I just woke up. I got a shower in a few minutes. He slept I I in his own idea. urine. Did you go home with your girlfriend? Yeah, she's downstairs. She was pretty pissed at you. Oh, yeah, she was furious. Yeah, she uh, did not like you at all. No, no. She and while you were passed out, everyone was... Confident. While you were passed out, everyone was trying to pick her up, by the way. Yep. I mean, everybody. <laughs> you got a good-looking girlfriend, a blonde there, and uh, you're passed out on the table, so everyone's like, ah! That's a great situation to be in. Uh, piss off your girlfriend really bad, pass out drunk in a bar full of drunken animals with a girlfriend who's also drinking. That just has yeah. my girlfriend's getting fucked by someone else written all over Exactly. <laughs> well, the best thing is we're going to Mexico tomorrow. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, so that's just... What a great thing to do right before we leave together for a week. Yeah, well, you'll patch it up while you're in uh, Mexico. I'm sure. Yeah, hopefully. You got any room on your trip? Because I need a place to go on vacation. Yeah, come along. Come you on. could probably take her. Yeah, <laughs> with his girlfriend. And, and, and then you threw your, like, uh, urine-stained, uh, wet underwear at Steve. Are you nuts? I was really drunk. You really? Think? You think? <laughs> Wait till you see the video later this weekend. Oh, my God. The guy actually started drinking at uh, about 5.30. Yeah, on yeah. the train on the way About there. 5.30 on the train. He was drinking rumple mints all day. Mm. Well, all morning. And then you just... Ha- did you think you would be able to pace yourself? Are you insane? Drinking hey, rumple you mints at 5.30, it you thought, ah, I could last. I could last a while. <laughs> Has any regret seeped in yet? Well, the, the fact that I missed half the show... Yeah, that's true. I would regret that. But I did that. get a MiFi. Yes, you did. My goal. Yes, you uh, did. Henchman <laughs> from Brooklyn is uh, came up with a name for you, and I think it's a, a fine name. You are now known as Chris Piss. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What a Good stroke of luck. His name way. rhymes with piss. But that's great. Every live appearance we do, we can bring you up on stage and go, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Piss. Chris and they're, Piss. They're going to lose their minds. And you can wet yourself. They're going to have all little... Little discussions about you, like that's the guy, that's the guy. They I remember talk about him. The Peter's pants for a mile. I'm a legend. You what? are a legend. You're a legend. Nice. <laughs> All right, Chris. <laughs> All right, bro. Punch it out. All right, bye. Enjoy. Uh, Drew Boogie. Someone wants to know if you have a website. No, I do not. I have nothing. You really need a website. A website. Throw some of this stuff on there. A little advertising, and you'll, you'll do all right. Make a, a few nickels. Yeah. A few, few nickels. nickels. Starker Patty's online just to comment that she loves her new song. Stalker Patty. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very good. You you heard the uh, the song? Yes, I did. It was the funniest thing I ever heard. It was so not me. It was so that funny. Well, it's you saying all those words, Patty. 
I know. It was for me reading the magazine and little things, you know, I may have said that you got patched together. What Drew a is sexy very clever. voice she has. Oh, Isn't yeah. that just the hottest, sexiest female voice? Blah, 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 blah. Are you working today? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm getting ready to go into work now. Did Why you have you... fun yesterday? Yeah, I had a great time. I got to speak to a lot of people. Uh, I love being around a lot of people. I miss that. You're around a lot of people every day when you're handing out chocolate. Yeah, Work at a mall. Yeah, but like having a good time and having fun or being out. I'm always, uh, you know, entertaining myself by myself, you know, going to places <laughs> everywhere by myself. Any possible dates? What? Any possible dates? No, not that I know of. <laughs> None of these guys came up to you and said, you know, Patty, I, you know, I kind of have something for you. Uh, probably only in my dreams right now. <laughs> ah, in her dreams. All right, none of those guys approaching you saying, let's, uh, let's go out sometime, huh? <laughs> no, but it was fun to talk to everybody. I'm surprised no one actually comes up to Patty and asks her to go out. You know? <laughs> that would be nice, some though. Of the, I'm not talking, you know, some of the sane people that go to our events, but, you know, some of the real freak guys. Well, like the guy that does surgery on himself. That would yeah, be like, nice... why didn't he go, Patty? You, if, if one of our listeners came up and nicely asked you to go out to dinner one night, would you go? Well, I would have to get to know the person. I would chat oh. with you the person. You get to know them right. at dinner. Like, uh, you, you know, can't be picky at this point, sweetie. I'm going 50 with. 50 years yeah, old, and she's a virgin, and she's being Patty, this picky. Do you understand yeah. every person probably listening to this show right now goes through that stage in their life where they just don't get to know anyone and they just bang people? <laughs> you never went through the banging stage. Yeah, and playing no. hard to get kind of ends at about like 24. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, it, it starts becomes from, really annoying and from, not worth the effort. For a lot of people, it starts in high school and then maybe college, and that's that <laughs> period where you're you're not getting to know anyone. You're drinking and then seeing something that looks good, and you, 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 you know. Yeah, well, I wasn't allowed to date in high school, and in college I was in the fellowship, so it was like a little difficult. You were in the what? The fellowship. Of the ring? Yeah. Oh, can you hobbit? excuse me just a second? I'm just going to leave my phone for one second. Yeah, oh, turn down your my radio. radio's on too loud. I can hear it. Hold on. Of course it is. Of course it is, Stalker Patty. What a dope. <laughs> As she walks to the radio, she'll hear this. Still Kill blaming yourself. <laughs> I'm back. I you're turn blaming, really you're right. She's still blaming high school. I wasn't allowed, and then I was in the fellowship. Yes. <laughs> Patty, do you realize if you do not get aggressive, you're going to be alone for the rest of your natural life? I think she figured that out like 20 years ago. Yeah. you got to stop thing playing is the victim. My shyness. Shyness? You took your top off and crawled around <laughs> on the floor in front of hundreds of people in a Krusty the Clown mask. <laughs> yeah, we want to know. How shy is that? We want to know more about the fellowship. Yeah, what's the fellowship? Oh, it was the Christian fellowship, you know, the people oh, I was great. involved with in college. Teaching you about your awful, dirty vagina that you ought to keep covered at all times, <laughs> right? Well, you know. I remember one time I came to church in shorts because it was 98 degrees and it was like one of those churches in the village, you yeah. know. And I thought it, everyone was kind of cool. The lady t gave me a skirt and told me to put it on because I would be disturbing the brothers in the fellowship. Why? Because boys wear uh, shorts and only girls wear uh, I don't skirts? know. They didn't want me to show my legs. They didn't want you. What, doesn't a skirt show your legs? Yeah, but it was a long skirt, <clears throat> like a maxi skirt. Ugh. She's Makes old everything turns. sound sexy. A I maxi skirt in the, in the fellowship. <laughs> yeah, I was offended, though. I never went back there again because I thought it was ridiculous. Patty, tell everybody, um, after you were abandoned as a small baby in a diner, tell everybody where they sent you. Where? The New York Foundling. The New York <laughs> Foundling. What? Is it, she was one Did of we, the little rascals. This is so sad. <laughs> Did we go back into a time machine? We're talking about flash bulbs today. We're talking about funeral parlors. Funeral parlors the, the New York Foundling. And the Fellowship. And the Fellowship. It's 1935 today on Down the Down near Ellis Island, they had the foundry. And we saw the Statue of Liberty. The when the ship came through and we all saw the statue, it was a wonderful time for us. I was in quarantine with the smallpox for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. Patty, the foundling. The we were abused daily, but it was better than the homeland. <laughs> a lot of the men I met were sent to Boys Town. <laughs> She's like from the 30s. The, the, what is the foundling again? That's at the New York Foundling Hospital. That's the actual name of the place. And is that they can dedicate an entire hospital to children they find? In a yeah, diner. they have a department, a, a foster care and adoption department. 
Yeah. yeah. You, you didn't make it out of the adoption department, I noticed, huh? No, I was raised by 60-year-olds. They, you know, probably considered too old to adopt or something. So they just so threw they you in these various the foster homes? <clears throat> That's why she talks the way she does. You know she talked like this when she was eight. Right. Yeah. Her parents were 60-year-olds. Patty was... Uh, Patty well, go catch the early bird special down at the <laughs> diner. <laughs> what am I, made of money? <laughs> <laughs> it was <an> old Patty. <laughs> Give me my reading glasses. I can't see, god damn it. <laughs> oh, wow. So, all right, they, you're sent to the Foundling Society or whatever, and then a lot of the babies are, are adopted eventually, right? Yeah, a lot of us that are older. God, you I was know an what? older child. I was 16 Stalker months old. Stalker Patty was the, the one puppy that's left over at, yep. at, at the, the pet shop. <laughs> yeah. 16 months and you were the old baby? Well, yeah, well, it's like after one year old, you're old. You're too old for adoption. So they, they don't want you. They want they don't want baby. someone else's problem. They want little babies. <laughs> yeah, they want the fresh puppies that come in. Yeah. Right, the little cute ones that are... <laughs> right. They got they the little a... triangle ears hanging from the side of their head. And the other puppies go out the back door and thrown in the back of a pickup truck. The big ones that are <laughs> sitting there with the big loads of crap in their cage. You don't want that because you know it's going to end up on your rug. Those puppies were special in their little cage for about a week or two. Yeah. You know, they... They blow dry their hair, make them all nice. They have ribbons around them and stuff. Put and them in the front of the window so people can actually see as they walk by and, and walk in. And those puppies only have two or three weeks shelf life. Yep. And if if you're not convincing the your your future owner that you're the one, mm -hmm. now you're being shipped out the back door with the old couples, just thrown in a pickup truck, and uh, God knows what yeah. they do with them. Yeah. you the the big puppy? <laughs> yeah. It's over. It's it over, is Johnny. Over. They don't want you, and they didn't want you, Patty. So. You you just kind of went from foster parents to foster parents, <laughs> old people. Yeah, it was a lot of older people. The last home I was in, I was in for years. I was like almost two years old, and I stayed there till I was eighteen. From was two so years to eighteen, you were with one. Uh, yeah, from two, and then before well, I was they must two, have been I was something. with several. It was in several hands. They must have been something. Two years to eighteen years, so they pretty much formed you as a human being. Yeah, well, they were in their sixties. They were elderly. Elderly in and their sixties. My 60s. record was a Victrola. You know, the the <laughs> car was a machine or a carriage. Oh my! They God. used to call. A, the, the refrigerator was an ice box. That's what they said. Yeah, they used I to mean, talk come on, that people. The These people were old. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like she's doing stand up. Right. <laughs> I got it. How you. old were they? The refrigerator was an ice box. For <laughs> right. Christ's sake! Is this they thing were... on? What's going on? <laughs> I tell you, they were old. Hey, 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 <laughs> I gotta tell you, you know, I come out of the Foundling Center. You know, <laughs> hey, we, we went to the ice box. I gotta tell you, they took me to school in the Carriage, huh? Stalker <laughs> hey, <talk of> Rodney. <laughs> they were old, let me tell you. <laughs> I need my oh laugh my track. God. I need a laugh track for this type of. You uh, are. Radio. You were raised with uh, a, a very old couple, is what you're saying. <laughs> Do they teach you about sex, Patty? Actually, it uh, was only about a month before I actually got my first uh, thing. Your first what thing? Your first period? Yeah, only a month before. And, I, I and mean, how old were you? How old were you when you got your first one? Oh, like a fourteen. Fourteen. So little Patty is ready to get it, and your your uh, uh, foster parents <laughs> before decided. Before that, I had no idea what all, it was. All right, hold on. And your parents have to be in their seventies at this point. Oh yeah, pushing that. Well, one of them di died at sixty-nine. The other one lived till his eighty. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. <laughs> Died at seven at sixty nine. Yeah. And now were you st you were still living uh, in the in the the house when she Actually, died? Actually, at that time I was in the college and. Uh, oh, the fellowship. I was twenty. I was in the old. college. The <laughs> college. Like <laughs> doing the study. <laughs> In the college? <laughs> yeah, it was only in college that I started to really uh, come out a little bit, you know, being around other people on the floor and stuff. Right, and they have right. They tell me, Patty, this is wrong. Fight for your rights. Get away from you them. You've got to fight for your right to party. That's funny, because by then it was probably the 60s, and that's the flower power people talking. Yeah. And she's still back in the 40s talking. She's way you gotta back. you got to fight for your rights, man. <laughs> Summer of love. But I have to oh. go to the college. i got to go to the college. I can't believe there's Japs and Krauts here at the college. <laughs> so you were hanging out with like a 70-year-old mom when you were a teenager. Yeah, and I couldn't talk about anything with her. Everything was bad. 
Everything was bad. Yeah, yeah, so when you talk about sex, you know, you didn't probably even bring up the subject of you sex. You didn't say the word or your head was off your shoulders. Patty, how did they tell you about sex uh, right before you got your period? Oh, uh, you're going to get pain in your stomach and you're going to get sick and this and that, whatever. And, uh, and then I remember when I got it, I got the worst awful cramps and I really was sick. You know. So but I did they tell they, uh, you what it was all about and why you were... That was what it was all about, getting sick. No, so I did, really was sick every time I had it. Patty, did they tell you that you were, you know, expelling an egg and did they give you the whole <laughs> thing of what it was? I don't even think they understood what it was. <laughs> a lot of people at that age, in that time, born during the time that they were born, yeah, really the didn't know what was going on inside them. <laughs> well, the J nineties, the J nineties, right? <laughs> did you take you out to get your first uh, pad? Uh, yeah, I had to wear those. Yeah, and then with the belt, right? I think I remember the conversation to the house. What, what's that? They had a younger friend that was in her 30s bring him over to the house. No, that was her her actually how to get somebody else to that, bring him. That was her great grandkid. <laughs> <laughs> did they have any the of their own? Did they have any, any of their own children? Who's the shoe cop? No, they never did. They said they couldn't have them. The only one they adopted was an older brother. I'm no longer in contact with. Oh, did he touch you? No, uh, no. He used to pick me up and throw me across the room on the bed if I annoyed him. Yeah, that's that was about it. Or pick me up and put me on a high dresser. Ha, ha, has, and leave any, me there. has anything positive? <laughs> wait, wait. You hear that? <laughs> that's a great gag. When Patty would annoy the brother. He would put her up on a high dresser and leave her there. Yeah, I'd be uh, whining and everything. Get me down. Get me down. I was so tiny. I was so tiny. Wow. That is some life. I was five years old and a three-year-old's height. You were a three-year-old's height at five? Oh, yeah. I was the smallest in the class, always. So you're a little tiny thing. Are there any pictures of you as a baby, as a kid? Nothing under the age of two. Not one thing. I don't mean that. I mean... I mean, like, are there pictures of you at, you know, 10 or 14 or something? Yeah, I do have a lot of photos of myself. Patty, I have to if, pick them up, but I got them. If you could uh, bring us some of those, we would love to look at them, scan them, and put them up on the website. Sure, I will. Yeah, I'll grab them. I want to see what you look like back then. i my uh, box in my closet. She when never she disappoints. Did, did anything happy ever happen? Anything positive? Yeah, Patty. Any happy memories from back then? <clears throat> did you have a fly, a kite? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think I was happier being out of the house than in the house, you know. If I was out with my friends playing, I was happy and carefree. But when I came carefree. inside, it was like, uh, you know, gay. Yeah. It's like a museum, I guess. It had to be, you know, couldn't touch anything and stuff like wow, that. Wow, it's like I wasn't allowed to turn the TV on and stuff unless they did it. Being you know? over your old grandma's house or something all the time. Mothballs. Was, was, yeah, mothballs and plastic on the furniture. And awful food. Yeah, horrible old people food. The horrible old oh, people actually, smell. she could cook. That was the one positive thing. She was a great cook. How oh would you know? God. You had nothing to base it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patty, what, uh, did you ever have fun with your mom? Compare it to. Not really, no. I couldn't even be in Girl Scouts because she was too old to take part. It didn't feel <laughs> like it, so they, the school wouldn't oh. allow me to be in it. Uh, the school, why? Because your uh, adopted whatever mother was too old? Right, well, because she couldn't take part in everything, and she had to commit herself twice a month to be part of the, be a den mother. And Oh, is that the it. deal? If, you're, if you join the Girl Scouts, your mom has yeah. to be a den mother a couple <laughs> of times a month? And I remember trying to go to the meetings and beg. I was like eight, nine years old. I really wanted to be a brown. Oh, he wanted to be a Girl kid. Scout. It was it's prevented un because it was a rule. Your parents had to participate no matter what. Oh, so that, I couldn't do it. An old graham cracker hip couldn't uh, participate, huh? <laughs> no. I remember one time we had a class trip to Daytop Village. They said there's going to be people in the trees jumping down at you. I was forbidden to go. I had to stay home. Daytop Village. village. And it would have been a learning experience. It what the fuck? Wait, 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 Patty. Know? What's the Daytop Village? She just says village. these things like it's nothing. Yeah. Daytop Village, where people are jumping out of trees on top of her. Well, I'm sure our listeners can have a bunch of jokes trees, there you know, for that. My father used to tell me, you're not to go to an amusement park with a guy. You'll go in a tunnel. Next thing you know, you'll have a baby. And I kept asking him, but what happened between the time I went in and when I had the baby? And he wouldn't answer me. Oh, you go into one of a tunnel of love or something, yeah, and you come out and you're going to have a baby. Asked, but what was going on that I had this baby? Where did it come from? You know, and they wouldn't tell you. Me. He would walk away or yell at me. I think it was a metaphor. You're speaking in metaphors. The, the tunnel. tunnel. Right. Like you go in and legal. out and in and out and in and out of the tunnel, and then you get hit with some stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I had this 
this, and I'm going in the tunnel with the guy, and I'm coming out, and we have a baby in our arms. So I'm like, well, how did this happen? When did you <laughs> finally When did you finally oh, learn ha- about oh, good sex? Good question. Yeah, Patty, when did you finally find out exactly how this all works? Oh, when I lived in the dorms, and uh, friends I know gave me books and things, and I used to read them, like, from the library and stuff, you know. What, were some, what were some of the titles? The year of high school, when I used to go to the library and find things and bring them home, but I had to hide them. Of course you did. What were some of the titles? Do you remember? Uh, one of them was... Uh, Becoming a woman or something like that. I don't remember. It was too long ago. Sure it was but real there were those types of books in the library section with the librarian herself helping me, which confused me because she was kind of old, and she showed me those books herself. So I guess it must have been just them and maybe not an old people's thing in general. I guess my teacher, Mrs. Crabtree, <laughs> she took me and Chubsy Ubsy <laughs> to the library. Alfalfa used to make fun of us. All right. All right. Well, Patty. Patty, your life deserves a book and a movie. <laughs> it's like Angela's Ashes. Do you ever read that book? you just like, is it ever going to get better? It just people never just, gets better. Yeah, with people her. just keep dying. We've known Patty for over five years now. Yeah, at least. And w- everything new she tells us is just another sad story. Are you happy now, Patty, in your yeah, life? Yeah, I'm much happier now. You're a happy woman now? Yeah, I feel a lot freer. What do you think would complete your, yourself to make you the happiest you could be? Is Cock. it a relationship? Cock. You Cock. mean somebody that I care about and want to be with for the rest of my life. That yeah. would make me very, very well, happy. Well, as we were saying before this whole conversation got started, you got to loosen up a little more. And if Cock. somebody asks you out, you got to go with them maybe to a restaurant and have some dinner uh, and and not worry so much about getting to know them before you go out. You get to know people at dinner. That's what the dating is for. Pat. Oh no, my point is, I want to make sure it's not with a nut that's going to hurt me. Or well, something. it's it's going to be one of our listeners, so you got to kind of put that away. It's, it's going to be hurt a nut. you in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jimmy, have you been listening to this? Yeah, and it was uh, it's it's much easier to hear on hold. Like I can I can hear you guys loud and clear on hold. And then once we come through, it's it's very very hard. Yeah, that figures. I so bet- it's only on that translation, but you can't hear when you're on hold. I bet you it's the same problem where you know um, the audio drops drops in half when we you know push different buttons on the board here. I wonder yeah. if the same thing's going on with the phone system, Anthony. But I I yeah. did hear enough to realize that this conversation is making me nauseous. Old copper panties. I don't need that. <laughs> Old copper panties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Patty. I think we're gonna let you go and uh, talk to Jimmy here. Okay. Patty, 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 get me some chocolate-covered cherries. Oh, oh okay, sure. Thank I'll you. I'll take up those photos, too. That works like a Godiva. And, and truffles. Okay. Yeah, the truffles are really good. My She's mom's chocolate connection. Yeah, my mom uh, loves the truffles. We'll, oh, pay, cool. we'll pay you okay. for them, Patty. Yeah, we'll pay you. <clears throat> and for Christ's sake, join the Fellowship of the Penis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Patty? Yes? Could you uh, bring me one of your pulpy tampons dipped in chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, Jimmy, if that's possible. <laughs> Uh, Everything else is possible, but I don't know about that. <laughs> the fellowship. Then I went on to the two towers. <laughs> right. <laughs> the f- All right, I got to get ready for work uh, now. The Foundling yeah. Society. Foundlings. The fellowship. What? Great. <laughs> okay, so have okay. a good day, guys. Well, just hang bye, out, Patty. Bye, Patty. Bye. bye. <laughs> there she goes. All right, we're on the phone with Jimmy Norton. Yes. How was your flight, Jimmy? Jimmy, I got to ask you. I looked at the weather yesterday, and it was at, right after the show. You had to leave right away to get to the airport. I looked at the map, and all I saw in Florida was uh, horrific thunderstorms. And I, all I could think of was poor little Jimmy. How did it go? It was um, well. The flight was late because our plane came in from England, so we were probably an hour delayed. Ah, lucky um, for it you. It was definitely turbulent. What's that? Lucky for you. Well, it was very turbulent. I mean, I actually had to recline all the way in my sleeper seat to try to enjoy the flight. <laughs> oh, what a bitch. <laughs> yeah, it was very, uh, it was no food served on the plane. So the flight kind of blew. Very small crowd because uh, the date was supposed to be tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday, but I, could, I didn't want to miss today and Monday with you guys, so I switched it to last night. So a lot of oh, people didn't so even know I was there. So it's our fault that no, you. No, 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 not at all. Please. It was so fine. you're blaming us and the show. Well, no, the lack that's what I'm telling crowd. myself to keep from putting a bullet in my head, realizing I only bring 50 people in. <laughs> It'll be better tonight. It's Friday. I, I hope so. I, I really can't hear you guys. This is very frustrating. Ah. Uh, well, we're just kind of recapping yesterday's program. I mean, it was just uh, an unbelievable time. 
Uh, what happened after I left? I mean, I'm sure that there was more more of hanging. Any chicks flashing? No, 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 no. That's... No, everyone was very uh, uptight about the the boobies being shown in uh, a bar with the liquor being served. I don't know what's going on. And and uh, we discussed how uptight you were, and what? how and how you were the uh, voice of reason yesterday. Uh, dude, look, all I know is this: I've seen this thing go down the toilet before. <laughs> I've seen what happens after it. I don't want it to happen again. That's true. I agree with Jimmy. And when it came down to the knife, the guy that wanted to swallow the knife, I agreed with Jimmy. There was no way that should have happened, and it didn't. But we needed but, to explore that a little bit more. No, we didn't. Sure. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. I wanted didn't. the guy to kind of, like, just tease it a little bit just, to, just nope. to see how it might have uh, looked. Didn't even want to tease because he'd have dropped that thing right down his throat. And today we'd have been talking to Bob about how uh, after the criminal... Uh, trial is over. If we're acquitted, we might be able to get a job somewhere. That, it absolutely would have been happening today. What about the guy drinking the urine, Jimmy? Um, it, the only way that would have worked is if somebody went in the other room and whizzed, and nobody actually saw it come out of the body into a cup. Then it could have been it could quote unquote apple juice, but you never could have pulled that off with a guy just pissing into a cup. And believe me, there's nothing I wanted to see more than that fat man swallow that knife and just drop that on the stage. Well, that would have been fun. Nothing would have made me happier. Now, now, Jimmy, I noticed <laughs> Ben was freaking out at the guy that um, wanted to just urinate in his pants for the MiFi. And uh, I was all for that. That was one thing I wanted to see go down. Opie did, too. I really didn't get a, a, a feel about how you felt about that. Um, when Ben was panicking, I started panicking. I've become Kenny conservative with any You are in Nelly the nervous. It's probably too much, but it just seems like every time that we've had problems, it's been with something like that because our judgment tends to be go at the moment. And I understand, but you know something? I ran that. I run everything through my head before it happens. The knife thing, I saw the horrors of, of that uh, playing out in front of me. The the peeing in the pants, I saw nothing uh, that could have happened in that situation that could have hurt the show. So I figured let it rip. And then I saw old, old <laughs> shaky Jim sitting there. Stop it! I, oh, I really now wasn't. get him off the stage. Ben is freaking out. Some of Steve, <laughs> no, and the owner, and the hard rock. And you all of a sudden were just like losing your mind. Dude, look. I, first of all, I saw old Jack Torrance's hair was out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I started to get really nervous. <laughs> and I just, look, anything that's going to screw the show up, I just want us to do the show in a fucking cocoon where nobody comes in and we just talk and it's fun and we have friends in and nobody gets naked so we don't get kicked off the air again. There's, I'm there's, a, there's a gray area, though. Yeah, that, a yeah you're right. I know. That's a, that, that's what Ant and I discussed this morning. We're getting a little wimpy because no one was flashing at the, yeah. the event. You're allowed to flash in a bar whether they're serving alcohol or not. You're old Sid safe. Yeah, cause yeah I know. I, I agree. I've gotten a little bit nervous. But look, no one thought we'd be off the air for 26 months. So if I'm Pete Panic for a little while, you guys got to be fucking, you know, uh, earnest understanding. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that going down, though, and uh, and uh, I saw no problem with the guy peeing himself. I, yeah, I'm I think, glad you did. I think the hard, you know what that is? Like, the guy with the knife could have gotten us in trouble uh, legally. We could have been sued or arrested if something went wrong and then definitely lost our job. The, I guess only the Hard Rock had a problem with the guy weeing because I think they were a little confused and thought he was going to piss on the stage or something. Uh, we knew exactly it was going to happen, so you let it play out like that. Well, Jimmy they are just... a food establishment, and they, you know, if we, we announced, look, there's going to be a man urinating on the stage in your food establishment, I mean, you know, understandably. Yeah, but we knew his back. pants were going to soak it up. You got pissed like a thoroughbred in order for it to come out of the cuff of your pants, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of material to soak that up. And then you got the sock that'll soak that up a bit, you know. You got hey, to soak all that up. Off? I had enough confidence to know that no urine was going to hit the stage. Right. Were the, were the sexist people annoyed, or were they fine? Uh, we're about to. We were going to play the audio of her on stage because we're playing some of the classic moments from yesterday's show. We were. We started this break talking about that. We'll get to it after the break. But I guess they signed up for more advertising. Well, they, they got a long commercial yesterday. We talked about it for a while. They loved. They loved the show, and they yeah. they get it. So they went right to Will, who's our sales guy now. Will from WYSP. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He quit a great job at, at WYSP because he he believes in the Opie and Anthony show so much. Right. And uh, yeah, supposedly the gang from Sex Hits went right up to him and said, "Where do I sign up for more?" You know, if they would have just gotten a sixty second live read from us that went nowhere and just you know we did it uh, at that event. It wouldn't have really had an impact, but with the crowd just yelling at that brought up on the stage and not letting uh, the guy get a word in edgewise and them turning around all nervously looking at us, it was great. It was great for them. Well, the thing is, even though it probably didn't go the way they had scripted it out, 
these 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 rapists in the audience, just a bunch of fat guys with beer and, and you know and little half hard ons are the type of guys that are going to go onto this website and jerk off for hours. Exactly, it's their audience. They these want the the, they want those, those people. A bunch yeah. of racists. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it really was a racist show yesterday. Oh my God, they were just awful. They were animals yesterday. I was dying. The best. Oh yeah, the, the, horrible. The best part though was when we auctioned off Earl. That audio is coming up after the break too. <laughs> oh. But see, that was funny and clever. I mean, these, that was funny. Some that of these guys just going just... over the top of the N-word. Way over, over, over the again. top. Where it didn't even make sense. It wasn't even like the joke was dependent on it. It was just like, just for the no, sake of being vicious. No, it was just vicious. for the like, sake guy, of you know, being just vicious. Say it. There's a joke there, fine, but, you know, just to be a dick, you don't need to use it. And then looking up at us, trying to get that approval. Yeah. It's like, oh, God damn, dude. Well, and again, as far as shock value is concerned, I mean, this show has set a really bad precedent. You know, it's not like they, they, they've learned that shock value works very well here. <laughs> they sure have. You know, go for the balloon knot. You know, I mean, no one forgets that audio. You know, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna do more of these live broadcasts, Jimmy. We, uh, Ant and I were talking before the show. When did we agree to do a, a live show in front of our fans? We haven't done one of those in probably four or five years. Because they had been disasters in the past. We gave yeah. up on that. We either did road shows... Or, you know, live broadcast from things yeah. that didn't really involve the fans that much. But this one was an all-out, you know, performing right in front of the fans yesterday. I didn't realize it would be that either. And uh, I think it was, I mean, considering that Joe had his gig and Steven couldn't get out of his gig, I mean, it was great that Billy came by and, and, and uh, Bob came by. I mean, that really helped out, man, because yeah. that could have been like a nightmare. It turned out to be a great, great gig. Uh, yeah. And everyone said the show sounded really, really good, so we're going to continue doing these live broadcasts. What the oh, hell? Oh, yeah, we got to hit Boston, Cleveland. Let's hit some other places. Well, we're yeah, going to we be can't at... leave well enough alone. We have to do it until we screw up and go, we're never doing these again. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> and then somebody <laughs> miscarries on the dance floor, then we'll kind of just like, oh, let's go on to something else. The next one's going to be April 11th. Uh, we need the list listeners to spread the virus on this and help us out because we're not going to be able to promote it too well because we're going on vacation. But April 11th, we're going to do the show from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. East Coast time. We're changing the time of the show because everyone's getting, you know, we'll, uh, they're getting uh, ready for opening day. It's the Yankees yeah. and the Sox up there. And uh, the broadcast is going to be at Bill's Bar in Boston. That's on Lansdowne Street. Yeah. Oh, that's great. April 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I got to, uh, I was supposed to be in Boston that weekend, 8th and 9th. But because of this pilot shoot, I've had to move my Boston Comedy Connection date to April 29-30. Your tickets will obviously be honored, but that's the new date for Boston, April 29-30, not April 8-9. So I was supposed pilot. to be up there, but I'll just come up wow. there with you guys probably on the uh, Sunday morning. Mm. All right, Jimmy. All right, and again, man, I, I just I can't hear you at all, so. Yeah, well, that's going to all be fixed when we come back from vacation. That's, all right, good. That's why we're not bitching about it. Yeah, no, no, it's cool. I'm just letting you know that the, the listeners aren't jerking you off when they say that. It really is. It does just drop off really bad. All right, well. I'm going to sit here. When we get back, I'm going to be all tanned from my 10-day Caribbean cruise. They have uh, heat lamps in the casinos on those ships. That's the only way I'm getting it. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm going to be all tanned, taking calls that uh, can hear us. Perfect. Jim, well, I'm, I'm following you around on vacation because I got shut out yesterday. What do you mean? I, I was trying to book a trip last minute. I'm such an idiot, and everything's booked. Everything. I wanted to go down to Atlantis, and I can't get a, I can't get a room down there at all. What am I doing? Am I doing anything for the vacation? I think I'm just doing L.A. So come out to L.A. I oh. might have to just go out to L.A. Oh, you yeah, can come hang, hang out, out with Bob. Bob. Oh, that, yeah, Super great. Agent Bob Eatman. I just wanted to be on a beach and do nothing for a week to ten days. And Greg I'm, Brady. And I'm getting screwed. Dice. You could hang out with a bunch of people out there. Yeah, we'll just, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool. We'll split the room cost, you know, two men. Just, you know, big <laughs> yeah, two bed. We'll laugh two about it. hanging out in the room. Easy. Writing some movies. <laughs> Easy. Uh, hey, listen, uh, Monday morning, make sure you wear your Ozzy shirts. All right. Allegedly. Yeah, supposedly, Ozzy Osbourne is supposed to be in here Monday. Yeah, the uh, Monday show is going to be a disaster when Jim realizes that Ozzy blew us off. He won't blow us off. Uh, the tirade that Jimmy will have will be legendary. He won't blow us off. I guarantee. Well, I shouldn't say that because I don't want to jinx it. No, I don't think he will. Let's just put it this will. way. If Ozzy doesn't show up, you just you just listen to Jimmy on Monday. I, oh that, you're just going to hear the sound of a 36-year-old out of shape man just crying. I won't even be mad. I'll just kind of weep and just realize that that's the way it's got to go for me. It'll really hurt. And then we hit the road and we do two shows from Washington Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, to D.C. So. How, how many uh, pictures do you think you're going to take with Ozzy? Oh, I hope somebody films this for a few minutes. I'll probably just take one or two. Um, I want to get him Thousand. to sign the picture of yeah. me and him. And I might bring in the newspaper article that like his picture was next to mine and try to get that signed from when I was 13. When you played... Um... Asteroids. Asteroids and set some kind of a record as a little cute little kid. 
Boy, am I setting myself up for a disastrous disappointment on Monday. You really are. You're going to be bringing in all this memorabilia to have signed. He's so psyched. And Ozzy just won't show. Yeah, he might not. But if he doesn't, fuck it. I'll just go down to D.C. and console myself with a tranny. <laughs> Any luck in West Palm? No, of course not. No. no. Not at all. Nothing even close. No. All right. Hey, listen, man. Take care, guys. Oh, Billy, oh really uh, fast. Yeah. And this isn't a bit. Um, the topless broad coming in for the news. When is she coming? I don't know. You set this up. No, it was through Ben. She she contacted Ben, um, and she had to cancel that one day. So I'm hoping she comes in early this week sometime. But she can't. Maybe she'll come in Monday, or maybe or the week or we get back from vacation. I, I heard know. I heard she was uh, supposed to come in today. Oh, I didn't know that. No one told me anything. Ben? No? Yes? Oh, now you don't know? Ben doesn't know. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. All right, guys. Billy, take it easy, man. All right, take it easy, Jim. All right, see you. Fast, uh, Fast Freddy is saying that um, Spalding from Caddyshack used to tend bar at Bill's Bar. Is that true? Ben would know. John Barman, yeah. He used yeah. to? He's, he's, or does uh, he still? He's, uh, he's a Boston guy. He's always around town in uh, in Boston. What a great... Uh, Spalding, yeah. I, know, I would love I know to meet John. that guy. Wait, you know Spalding? Yeah, I know Spalding. Spalding. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> you know Spalding? I know Spalding. He's, cool he's been a that? bartender in Boston forever. Yeah. How cool is that? John right. Barman. Everyone in Boston knows him, yeah. Are he you looks, kidding? No. Well, <laughs> I'll see if I can get him to show up. Spalding. And I want a hamburger, and I want a hot dog. I, wait, 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 wait nothing like it. I right, hold on a minute. <laughs> You're gonna see if you can get Spalding. A Anthony and I would lose our minds Dude, to, to hang I, out with Spalding. That's like Ozzy showing up for Jim. All right, yeah, we'll get Somebody Spalding. Spalding from Caddyshack showing we'll up. We'll get Spalding Stop to show up. He's a, he's a, I think he does catering now or something. Are you up. kidding? No. How did I not? Know? Dude, I I'd rather there. I'd rather be. You didn't even know that. He's a bartender up in Boston? He was. I think now he owns a catering business or something. I'd rather... Dude, people used to leave drinks with cigarette butts in it on the yeah. bar oh, people, go, come oh, on, drink it. People would tease him all the time. Throw up in my Porsche. I would rather talk to Spalding than Ozzy. Of course. I'm not even kidding. Spalding. That would that would be interesting. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. That would uh, go back to the, the one famous... You're playing golf today. <laughs> Remember the one famous <laughs> drunken night where we hung out with the Hanson brothers? Yeah. From uh, Slapshot? From Slapshot. We got completely hammered with the Hanson Brothers. The Hanson Brothers. <laughs> I love those little peripheral yeah, characters. Yeah, without Spalding. a doubt. They're a lot more fun than the stuck-up celebrities. One of the greatest movies ever made he was in. Come like on. Paul Newman guy. Hmm? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, I, Paul, Paul Newman is a slap shot, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, hang out with that Paul Newman guy. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was dead silence. I'll be at the Funny Bone in Idaho. <laughs> they brought their fucking toys. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. Bill Burr in studio for Jim Norton. Earl on the phone. Oh, Earl. Uh, we got to play the audio of Earl getting auctioned off. We uh -huh. got to play the audio of uh, the girl from sexits.com. But as we go to break, you want us to do this into break? I want to play yeah. a little Jimmy thing first. Can we do this next? He wants us to do a live read for Paisano of Mulberry Where's Street in the Heart of Little Italy. Is. Ooh, a live read. We're not playing the jingle, though, because it's going to mess me up. Okay. What, the uh, Paisano song? Yeah. We'll do it next time. Okay. Joey. Well, I, but it starts off saying, like the song says. So I go, you love right, Pazano. Hold, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -huh, You're playing uh -huh. the song now? You love Pazano. Hey, it's my kind of restaurant. Come try Pazano <laughs> for that real Italian taste you yeah. want. Your table's waiting, so stay a while. Come taste the good life Italian style. And we won't whack you like that Spark Steakhouse place. Jesus, Anthony. No. What? Joey doesn't want any association with that whatsoever. I understand. It's a nice place to eat. It's, it's a all great I'm place. Saying. I went down there with Brother Weez and the gang only, uh, well, last weekend, Ed. You did. We had a great, great time, and the food was excellent. Did you enjoy their huge portions that you get at Paisano of Mulberry Street, Opie? Very huge portions, yes. Yes. Did you uh, Did nope. you say that uh, I sent myself and get a free glass of wine? Uh, well, we got a lot of things for free. Oh. Joey's very happy to be back on the program. <laughs> I even had to call Joey and go, Joey, I didn't expect you to pay for 12 people. Oh, wow, he actually... Uh, well, someone suggested that we go to one of his uh, competitors. Let's just put it that way. And I'm like, really? no way are we going to uh, Joey's competitor. So I called up Joey. I'm like, uh, can I get a table for 12? Thinking, you know, maybe unlike Frenchie, you know, he would do something for me. But I didn't expect him to, to, to pick up the whole tab. Picked up the whole tab. And we had a great, great, great time. One weird thing that's going on at uh, Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Yeah. Uh, they're playing Christmas music. Why? I don't know. Maybe Joey Still? can call the program if he's listening live today and explain that to us. I know at Christmas they play the Christmas music, but... I, I noticed that it kept everyone very relaxed, and the waiters were getting a, uh, a lot more tips. 
Because wow, people that got, might be some kind of thing going on. I think on. people got confused thinking it's the holiday season. You know, uh, people are a little more generous during the holiday season. I think they got this whole thing going on. I think they got something figured out down there. Yeah. Was Better there, tips if you play Christmas music. Were they Italian Christmas songs? Yeah, well, I finally asked... Uh, <laughs> I finally asked, uh, oh, my God, I forgot his name, the guy at the door that always takes Tony. care of us. <laughs> Tony? <laughs> Joey? Paulie? Which one? I forgot his freaking name. Vinny. And he always Vinny? That's a good one. Nicky? Uh, uh, Nicky? Mikey. Uh, with a C. Mikey. With a C. Uh, uh, Carmine? Uh, no. Uh, Carmanooch? Uh, 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 oh, Come man, I can't believe I, I forgot his name. Anyway, um, he explained to me that they have these mob CDs. What? Remember the mob CDs that came out? It's all the you music from for. from a, from uh, some of the mob movies and things oh, like that. Oh, I gotcha. And I guess uh, the unfortunate thing about those mob CDs, yeah, they have a couple Christmas uh, tunes on each CD because it's well, like a box set or something then. like that. Maybe they would play had those on. Yeah, well, that's the problem. So they're shuffling through and they can't uh, stop the Christmas music. Yeah, but the rest of the music's great. Well, even the Christmas music was fun to listen to. Of course it is. Yeah. Down there on uh, at Paisano and Mulberry Street. Classic candlelit restaurant. Perfect for a late night date or romantic meal. Every single pasta on the menu now under 10 bucks. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that because you go down there, Joey foots the bill for everything. So head down there and have Joey pay for your meal at Paisano yeah, and Mulberry Street. Up to Street. 12. <laughs> up to 12, right. First 12 people get in for free. <laughs> They're open weekends till 2 a.m. Paisano of Mulberry Street, right there in the heart of Little Italy between Grand and Hester. Call them up, 212-965-1188, 965-1188, Paisano of Mulberry Street. There you have it. As we go to break, because Norton's not here, we'd like to play some tracks from his um, his CD when he's not here, mm -hmm. just to keep him involved with the program, right? A new CD's coming out uh, from Jim Norton. You've got to go to eataballet.com for the details on that. But from his Yellow Discipline CD, here's a fine little track called I Wish I Were Gay. And I'm not knocking gay people. I wish I was gay. <laughs> gay guys are lucky, man. You can go out and rob banks. If you get caught and go to jail, ah. <laughs> what are they going to do? Rape you in the shower, you lucky devil? Because I remember my girlfriend and I were watching Oz, and she's like, Do you think you'd be raped in prison? Look at me. I'd be raped in the bus on the way to prison. I was raped in Monopoly jail. They never did find that little silver shoe. And guys are so stupid, they always try to help you. Hey man, if you go to jail, don't drop the soap. Like that's what causes a prison rape, clumsiness. Hold the soap and you'll be all right. Or if you drop it, just pick it up. Oh, we almost got it. Yeah, yeah. I spent one night in jail, and it's really a scary place, man. Because you really uh, think you know how you'll behave. It was for the, uh, the Obie and Anthony show. It was a, a, a thing called the Boyer Bus we did. And me and Lewis Black were on the voyeur bus when we got arrested about a year and a half ago. And we spent the, uh, the night in jail. Um, and, you know, uh, it's very scary because you really do think you know how you're going to react. Like, I'm a man. They say something, I'll say something back. I'm a man. I'm a little out of shape man. <laughs> I'll never forget this six foot five Puerto Rican guy in the cell just pacing back and forth. If that guy had walked over to me and said, suck my dick, I would have. <laughs> It's not gay if you're doing it to survive. A lot easier to brush your teeth than pick them up off the concrete. You don't have to like it. Just do it. Keep your eyes open, though. That's important. Oh, 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 wide open eyes. Don't close your eyes. That sends the wrong message. Mm, mm. Up and down only, up and down only. Don't try improving and going down the side. Maybe he'll like this. Uh. And don't tickle his balls unless he tells you, tickle him! All right. Especially as out of shape as I am, I'd be afraid they'd take off my shirt and titty fuck me. Do you know how embarrassing that would be? It's bad enough if they rape you, it's more degrading if you have to help. Push them together! Push 
for your pleasure, sir. I just love a drive in the country, laughing with Opie and Anthony. That plane is flying awfully low, don't you think, Ramon? In studio, Bill Burr today. Uh, Eric just handed us pictures of um, a fine female soldier there in Iraq. Man, well, What's yesterday... What's this all about, Eric? And yesterday, friend, I had said uh, that I, I, there aren't any hot chicks in the, in the military. And yeah. I, you know something? I've been proven wrong. I yeah. got an email, and uh, this guy was pissed. And he said... I understand. He's like, that whole rant, that's bullshit. Read this. I read the email, and then it goes to this link of well, photos he has. You know this something? Girl is hot. When we're only shown pictures of Lindy England, <laughs> you know, the beauty that was Lindy England <laughs> with the leash and the prisoner, she was uh, ooh, quite the looker, that girl. Yeah, well, look, check out these pictures. Where's Anthony's copy? Uh, I took a look. I, I, I've been passing them around. Well, you got to describe I like the listeners. last couple of pages. Are we allowed to, to get these up on a website? Uh, we're checking on that. I, yeah, I don't want to give a name uh, or anything like that. She's in her little uh, her little room with uh, a whipped cream uh, bikini top on, Anthony. Probably block her face out. Completely top. Yeah. Why? Her face is beautiful. No, I, I mean because get you get her in trouble. Oh. You're not supposed to well, do Well, we'll see what the like boyfriend that. says. I don't know. She's got a, a boyfriend. It's, it's the her. army. Well, she's got a whipped cream. Uh, maybe it's Uncle she, Sam. But maybe she's coming home tomorrow. Maybe she's in the clear, Anthony. You come home tomorrow, you're still at, you know, in reserve. She's got a, done with active duty. You still have a commitment to the army for a while. The girl's beautiful. She's a brunette. She looks pretty tall. I don't want to get her in trouble. Nice boobies. She's got a whipped cream bikini top on. She's and got a yeah. French manicure. Yeah. I don't Where know do you get that? this now? In I'm, Baghdad. She's in Jersey. And now she's, she's in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> they just redid her basement. Put up she a flag. She does have a French manicure. And now look she, at that. Well, where's she having her nails done? In Iraq. Yeah. That's great. The Fallujah Hair and Nail <laughs> Salon. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, now she's with her her friend who's also topless, and they they got some uh, heavy artillery oh. in their arms there, Anthony. Yeah, I see the girls carrying like an M60. Right, that's really hot. Topless girl with a M16. Like a machine gun, she's holding. Or like a yeah, and then uh, then she's holding up two uh, grenades to her boobies. Yeah, she's holding grenades. It doesn't look horrorish at all. Looks like a. Uh... It, it's very uh, tastefully done, Anthony. Yes. Believe it or not. It looks like they're in a college dorm room too. Playboy There's like all yes. kinds of stuff hanging on the on the walls, so it's not. It doesn't look like a barracks or anything like that, or military quarters. There's a flag. And like tapestry on the wall, no, all kinds of doodads. No beaver shot. It's very uh, no. The the, the last couple of done. pictures, she's holding an M60 machine gun between her legs. She's completely naked. Uh, she's got like a a strap of ammo, a chain belt uh, around her chest. And, like uh, a Mexican guy in all the yeah. old cowboy movies. Yeah, an old bandito. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gringo. Uh, hey, gringo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's quite lovely. I have an observation, though, Anthony. Yeah. And, and you do know a little bit about everything. I'm going oh, to challenge you. I'm uh, going to uh, challenge you today. Oh, the challenge. I think I finally got got you on, on something. I'll admit because I don't know everything. I understand that. Let me uh, let me play this first. Forget Aristotle and fuck Socrates. <laughs> Here comes Professor Anthony. Okay, Awful. Anthony. I'm looking at these uh, th these pictures here. Okay. And it's something I've thought about for a while now, mm -hmm. and it's blatantly obvious in this picture. And there's nothing wrong with it. I don't want to trash this let, girl because she's very, very hot. Let me go to the picture. Extremely hot. But it's just an observation I have. Turn your workbooks to page. <laughs> <laughs> like, go to this picture. This picture will uh, well, will, will be the on one. The okay. Wall. All right. Okay. I've noticed this. Oops. I've noticed in this picture, and I've noticed uh, lately when I look at girls uh, topless, Anthony. Okay. Uh -huh. Why is it? That one boob is bigger than the other on Ooh. a lot of females. You're noticing that on this chick? Yeah, look at the left one. All right. 
Okay, I, I don't know uh, if this is just the pose, because look, she's holding a machine gun with one hand, and the other hand is just kind of bent a little, so that might be... Uh, she might have been wounded in there's combat. I'm telling you, there's... Bad part of her tit shot yeah. off. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's something to this. A lot no. of girls have one boob that's slightly bigger than the other. I'm just saying slightly. I don't want to piss off this, uh, you know, the boyfriend of this girl because she's really, really hot. And, oh, there's, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's still in, you know, in proportion. It's not like a freak show here. It's, it's just slightly bigger. And I've noticed this uh, time and time again. And it's usually the left boob that's a little bigger than the right boob. Professor Anthony? Wow. I didn't know about the left or right, but I will say I, I, I'm not sure. I'll say I'm not sure. Okay. I could speculate. All right. Uh, people are uh, not symmetrical, Opie. People uh, are different one side to the other. That's your answer? Everybody is. A and and boob size is no different. But that's your answer? They're it's flailing. Just... Yeah, I, I am flailing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm <laughs> flailing. I'm thinking that maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, actually. All I could say is the reason is... Uh, People aren't the same one side or the other. They are not symmetrical. And there uh, you have it. And, and one boob will be bigger than the other. Whether it's a lot bigger or a lot smaller, I know there are certain uh, problems that girls have that make them really big on one, one boob and really small the other boob, and that's something completely different. But uh, I think every girl, every girl, their boobs will not be exactly the same. We're just, you know, built that way, Opie. Well, uh, is your left testicle the same size as your right? Well, let me check. <laughs> Could you <laughs> Give do me that later? Maybe get back to us? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Forget Aristotle <laughs> and fuck Socrates. <laughs> Here comes Professor Anthony. Oh, Anthony Spit didn't... sucking ass. Anthony didn't really impress today with nah, his, his knowledge. Uh, Jason? That's all I know. Yo. Hey, Jason. Hey, fellas. Anthony just took my thing. Biology is imperfect. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, are you saying that uh, I was right? Anthony is right. The Thank you, Jason. Right again. And how would you know? What are your um, qualifications to uh, well, talk about? Well, my right nut hangs lower than my left nut. There you go. But I notice it's usually <laughs> the left boob bigger than the uh, right boob. Ladies, why don't you study yourself and uh, get back to us. You okay? know, your testicles, Opie, are uh, different sizes, but they, they're also, um, one will hang lower than the other, always. And that is just so they don't bang together when you put your legs together. Like click-clacks? Like click-clacks. <laughs> that would be very uncomfortable as you walk around the city. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to have one on top and one on the bottom a little bit. All right. Gotta you want you want to play the audio from the sex hits? Uh, uh, let's hear this girl just get pummeled by our animal audience. I guess we already set it up earlier. It's a new sponsor, and uh, they brought a whore by, basically, and uh, she was trying to get a word in. Whore. She was the... She's an actress. What was she called? The Canal Street Madam. Madam. The Canal Street Madam. And people were sending me links to all kinds of, like, crime sites. And apparently she was involved in some criminal activity and maybe mob activity. You mean we could have got a really good interview out of we her? We probably could have if our listeners would have shut up. Well, maybe we could bring her in the studio. No. And see what she's all about. You want to know who killed Kennedy? Yeah. No! <laughs> Did no. she say that? Did no, she say the Kennedy saying. thing? You she want the cure for AIDS? No! <laughs> All right, hold on, Anthony. i got to go back to the phone. Family gets at Roswell. No! She's got all the answers. <laughs> John in Philly? Old back fat. Hey, guys. Hey, John. Real hard to hear you, but uh, I hope I want to back you up, man. Every girl I've ever been involved with, the left boob was bigger. It's always the left? Yeah, th it's always the left for some reason. Hmm. I've noticed this. I I'm very observant. That's odd. Thank you. You, and, would, think and, you, uh, could, uh, you, you would think you could, could come up with a theory that uh, most people being right-handed, the right one would be bigger because... They're kind of moving that peck around a Could little Could it have more. something to do with the heart? Or is the, the heart's not dead center in your blood chest, flow? right? I don't know. It's a little maybe, to the left. I maybe think. a little more blood flow because it's closer to the heart. By how much? Well, I, like I said, I it's just know. slightly bigger. I'm not you saying it's a freak that. show where one's uh, you know, that much bigger. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Hey, uh, it's because they're right-handed and left-handed. The, the, the booby that's smaller is what hand they use because of the muscles. See, that makes no sense. If, sure it was, it does. if they were using their right hand more and their right arm, it would make that boob bigger. No, it would make it smaller because that, that muscle's tighter. Burns fat. Maybe it's burning the fat tissue away, and, oh. and you're getting a fatter boob on the left. I think we're getting Very to the bottom good. of this slowly Very but good. surely. That that absolutely no research. We're just creating oh, we are just urban myths. Throwing out ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the <laughs> audio. Conclusions, not even hypotheses. This is our conclusion here's based the audio. on one phone call. Here's the audio of the madam. All right. From yesterday, we really got to kind of move the show along because we still got the guy from uh, the New York Post that's coming in here to talk a little baseball with us today. Very good. I am the Canal Street Madam, and I got something to say. Oh, 
five. She's a madam. Very nice. Wow, madam. You're a madam? I like yeah, that. Hello. Now, can I have your attention, please? <laughs> no. They yelled now no. that I've got your attention. They answered. Now that I've got no. your, attention, can I have your attention, my name no. is Jeanette Meyer. <laughs> she needs a please let me talk. Feedback. This is, this is very important. <laughs> this is really My important. My name is Jeanette you know. Meyer. I've been yeah. on four. Yeah, love hand on shoulder blade. All right, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Holy fucking time, sweetheart. If you shut up, I will. Holy <laughs> fucking shut time, up. sweetheart. <laughs> How about a little respect for the lady, everybody? Holy <laughs> fucking time, sweetheart. How about a little respect for the lady, everybody? Holy <laughs> fucking time, sweetheart. <laughs> If, you sh- if everybody no, hushes, then yourself. let me tell my story. Now choke yourself. All right? <laughs> Sergeant, Sergeant Hartman showed up. All right, please let me speak, please. I have so much respect for New York and the people here. All right, sexits.com. What do you want to say, Janet? You're right. They, they're starting a trend. What are these fucking times, sweetheart? <laughs> She's right, got let's... a point she's trying to make Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a part of the international sex circuit that was busted in 2001 during 9-11. Huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> what? What? If you don't go down there and buy some pussy, then the terrorists win. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to hear sex stories or not? <laughs> 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 How do you lose with that? Do you want to know where your taxpayer money's going? <laughs> do you guys want to see tits? <laughs> uh, show us the clam. <laughs> oh my god. All right, let's hear for our new sponsor. <laughs> Jimmy, show your tits. Sexits.com. <laughs> wow, we. Jesus, did she get hammered. Our <laughs> listeners, they, they just rock. They really do. You are such an instigator. That was funny. <laughs> hey, she's trying to talk. Yeah, everyone calm down. Come, Come on. on. She's got a point to Give make. Give her a break, guys. She, the on. lady's got a point to make. <laughs> uh, you're lying about uh, the love handles on the shoulder blades, too. Very good. Classic. Oh. That's why you got to listen, start listening to the replays, because you, you pick up on a lot of little things. Oh, I missed all that. Little things. All right, now uh, uh, we're trying to move forward here. We got uh, the audio of Earl. Earl. Black Earl. Yes. One of maybe four guys of color that were at the event yesterday. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. And at times... Sure, some of our listeners made them feel very welcome, too. At, at times, there were over 500 people at the Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah. So uh, we brought Earl on stage. Earl. Everyone uh, everyone that has been coming up has been uh, going to the middle of the stage so they For can a get photo. photo so. A photo. All right, we're gonna we're moving Earl to the to the uh, front of the stage here so you guys can get your, your get pictures your, uh, of photo op of Black Earl. Earl, come on. Earl. Earl, Moses. Oh, yeah. Set up. Earl, come on. Earl, photo op. Photo op, Earl. Look. Photo op. They Earl got was their on to us, by the way. Let's go. We're, uh, Didn't we're help that I gave it away, too. Photo op. Yeah. Didn't. Photo op. Wait, over here. Go, Earl. No, Earl. Over here. The crowd is bidding on him. Are you listening to that? <laughs> Earl, it is. over here. Earl, over here in the what middle. dummy. <laughs> Just go in the middle. I'm not going in the middle. Huh? Uh, why Just am go. I afraid? Just come here. We need pictures. Earl. This will take some time. This is like the time. outtakes Kenny, from Mississippi move, Burning. Move, move. Come on, Earl. <laughs> Jesus. Thank I know you, better. No, you don't. <laughs> All right, we got Earl in the middle of the stage. And $25, $25, $25, do I hear 30 do I hear 30 And they're actually bidding in the crowd. <laughs> You're awful, you know that? You're an awful human being. Oh, that is really awful. A long way to go. Funny for as hell, but awful. A long way smart. to go for the joke. Jesus but Christ, I know. How long did that take? I gave it away. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. That's How awful. are you to know? <laughs> Look at that. Right. How are you to know we were going to be that awful? awful? <laughs> Thank you, Earl. Tasteless. <laughs> We're just laughing at uh, Eric Idle on, on TV. He's on the Today Show, and they're showing him. Uh, he has a, a spot of hair the size of an aspirin tablet on his head that that he is making bangs with. Right. That he has now combed forward. It is no. It is a little dot of hair on his head. It's on the base of his skull. Yeah, he's got like. <laughs> 
He's got like the hair around the back of his head. He's trying to pull it off that he still could grow long hair, but he's like Phil Collins has more of a, that strip of hair on the front of his head <laughs> right. that never left. Yeah, that never left. Phil Collins went bald, and then it just stopped happening to him. Yeah, he was left off with the same amount of baldness he had in like '83. Oh my god! And then Eric Idle has this little spot, and it fans out you into say, bangs and trying to cover like, like the side of his head like with Kathy it. Like Kathy Griffin, that thing yeah. that she does in the <laughs> Kathy Griffin does the same thing. That's pretty funny. Wow, that is really funny. Why? Why? Hey, by the way, a lot of pictures are starting to show up on OBAnthony.com and FoundryMusic.com from oh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, look, we got a picture right here. I'm looking at. Uh, that chick uh, that made out with, with Pat from Munaki getting her ass grabbed by Pat's pudgy little hand. Yeah. And then there's her sucking on Pat's foot. Wow, these are some uh, horrific pictures. a lot of pictures. Oh, they're up on Foundry? Oh, oh my God. Look at that uh, mouth open wide just sucking that discolored toe. Ugh. I did not watch a second of that. No, no, no. Let's... I took a glance because it's my job. I had to, damn it. You're oh, like... look at that face. Oh, is that perfect? Oh. This Boy, she really seems to be enjoying herself. This is some classic pictures from yesterday. Uh, Bob from Vegas, what's up, Bob? Uh, yeah, they call me to like warehouse the useless information. But uh, yeah, if, you, if you're predominantly left-handed, your left breast will be bigger, like your left foot, your left hand. Your right-handed, predominantly your right foot's gonna be a little bit bigger, like when you get sized for shoes or whatever. That but goes yeah, against I, Opie's logic. In, uh, Iraq the first time too, and there's some really hot women out there. So yeah, we saw, we get saw. Fooled, you know. All right, thank you. You added right. nothing. It's an awful thing to put hot women over there, though. It's an awful thing. You just you, the the thought of this girl here. We're looking at a picture getting captured by the Al Qaeda or something, or mm. one of those goddamn terrorist groups. And well, at least she has a bargaining chip. I mean, she guy, certainly you, does. You just you're done. She would just, but it would be every minute there would just be some new guy coming in to have sex with her. You'd just be screwing her all the time. Yes, we cut your head off tomorrow. But today, you get fucked. <laughs> Why am I Russian? <laughs> hey, I gotta take a break. I gotta take a leak. Oh, you, you do? Yeah, we're gonna get the guy from the New York Post that uh, wrote a book, a baseball book. We can talk about the whole steroid thing. That was huge yesterday in the news. Yeah. How many times did you have to watch McGuire cry? On, on TV yesterday. Oh, this is this is going to be a good topic. He wrote a book called Emperors and Idiots about the Red Sox and uh, the Yankees. Mm -hmm. And they have, we're going to get you in next finally, bro. Sorry about that. And we're also going to talk about uh, David Letterman's kid almost getting kidnapped. Now someone was planning. And uh, other things. So we're going to we're going to change up the show a little bit after the break, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, go to a long break. I got to take a leak and eat some food and get some coffee and blah blah blah. Bill Burr sitting in today. Like sands through the hourglass, so is the O and A virus. We got to get wheelchair Fred on the phone. Yeah, we really do. Wheelchair. He's getting Fred. all upset. This guy was in a motorcycle accident years and years and years ago. Really racked up his legs bad. Didn't hurt his spine, so he's not paralyzed. But his legs got so messed up, he didn't have health care coverage, so they massacred putting it back together. He ended up in a wheelchair. Not paralyzed, but he ended up in a wheelchair. But his legs don't work. His legs don't work. And his voice box got crushed, so he dog my bed. And he sounds retarded, but he's got all his wits about him. Fred? Yeah, you want me. What? I can tell you one thing. It's a bug. Door. I liked it. You liked it in the back door? I liked it in no. the back door. Yeah, but I see the light. No more guys for me. Oh, no more guys for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll stick to the dildo. And, and you're stuck with the dildo, right? You guys. I really think you need to show people out there your plight and how desperate you really are and what you have to do to get satisfaction. And I think that might help your life. How would he do that? I'm thinking, you know, he might want to give us a little demonstration today. Fred, why don't you roll into the bathroom and get your dildo? <laughs> no, thanks. I've got a little more class than that. A Fred. little more class than that. He took one in the ass from a guy he met at the deli. Let us know what you're doing, Fred. It's all lubed up. It's all lubed up. All right, Fred. Well, you know what to do with it now, so go ahead. Explain what you're doing, Fred. Well, we got it up my butt now. <laughs> <laughs> it, you, you got it up there, Fred? Yeah. How's that feel? It's getting stinging out of the bed. 
He has his voice changed. His voice changed. <laughs> his Your voice got lines. higher, Fred. What happened? Oh man, I can sing now. <laughs> his voice got higher. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is horrible. We'll do the silent game to him. So, Fred, how's it going in there? Oh, marvelous. I'm picking up speed nice and fast. Magic jump. Uh, oh, mercy, that was I've got the news. I need a girl to just for me. Are you there? Are you guys there? For God's sake, say something. Well, let's go just get out. It's a bullshit. So ladies, come on down and do me. For God's sake, do me. Okay, I don't know how you guys are. Later, I'm going to go now. Oh my God! Wow! <laughs> oh Jesus! Anybody else have a hard on? Obi <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony, the virus is spreading. Obi and Anthony Show, XM202. Do we have a nice thing to say about anybody? No, that's the beauty of the Do show. we just have a nice, one nice thing to say about one person? We just sit here and bash, even off the air, not even on mic. We're looking at the TV and just bashing Ellen DeGeneres. They should, they should have a channel on XM. It's just uh, our outtakes. The oh, stuff we say during the commercials. During just, the commercials? I just throw it up on uh, a channel knowing that it's probably not going to be that great. Probably get us in trouble. But you could eve, uh, yeah, eve, no doubt. You could uh, eavesdrop and uh, and check it out. Ellen probably overcame a lot in life. She's very successful, has her own show now. Still. And we're just, me, 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 me. Look at her. Ah, ah, she's probably going to dance. Johnny Carson just came out from behind the curtain. I mean, they showed her true. from, like, the green room. Right. Waving to everybody. It's like, I got it. Just start your show. Very pompous entrance. <laughs> and, then, and then everyone uh, is just waiting for her to dance, and then the applause sign will go on, and everyone will just lose their minds because Ellen is dancing again, everybody. Ellen's doing that cute little dance thing she does. It's not her thing. She's really that happy. Is she that yeah, happy no, all the time? that's not a gimmick. That's not a gimmick. You don't Come think? On. Yeah. No. It's a television show. It's that's your yeah. friend. Everything's not? true. She's I, just uh, always happy. I gotta admit, I like her comedy though, man. And I don't like many female comics, but if you were licking Portia de Rossi's box, you'd probably be oh. dancing every day too. Well, that's what Ant goes because she was wiping her mouth, and Ant goes probably wiping some vagina juice off her mouth. Yeah, she came out of her little uh, dressing room and she was wiping her mouth. I just thought, you know, what happened to her last girlfriend though? And uh, Anne Hayes. Whatever. She went crazy and decided she was heterosexual again. So she started dating men. Yeah, she's back uh, to... After she had her nervous breakdown in the desert or something. They found her. I love when they find a celebrity under someone's porch somewhere just freaking out. <laughs> or in a bush. Yeah, or... it happened to that... Uh, what's her name? She played the lowest... Margo Kidder. Yeah, Margo Margo Kidder. Kidder. Missing yeah. a tooth. Yeah, yeah, all fucked up. And she's just under a porch in a fetal position crying. And you walk out and go, Hey, that's the Lois Lane chick yeah. from the Superman movie. <laughs> she's crazy. Can I see you on Law & Order? <laughs> <laughs> Not against a fruitcake. Call yeah. 911. Ask her. Right. Ask Mike Vaccaro if he wants to come in and hang out. We're going to do a few like news stories, and then we'll get to him. But I don't want him to, to you know, feel out of place there. We were talking about Robert Blake during the commercial break, too, Anthony. Oh, we, my We got God. some great Robert Blake audio. Uh, I told you, I told Anthony in the office, we kind of discussed this yesterday when we were trying to do, like, some real radio, but it didn't uh -huh. work too well. I just want to say, uh, Pat from Unaki is checking in with some instant feedback, and it's actually a good one. Uh, Earl... Trying to get on on the stage, remember? He was like Karen in Goodfellas when De Niro was telling him to go to the alley to get some uh. dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Pat. 
Mike Pretty Vaccaro from the New York Post. We're going to get you in a little while, uh, in, in a little bit, but if you want to chime in, we're going to talk about some of the some of the other things going on in the news. You're right, right for the Post, right? Absolutely, sure do. Yeah, I, I recognize this picture, sure. man. Mm -hmm. The little bio, the the whatever they call it, the picture when you're reading the the columnist. The best picture is just my prom photo. That one. Was, yeah. <laughs> they usually put old pictures in there. Remember <laughs> Ann Landers' picture was like. Wait, what are you saying? That he, he doesn't look like his picture? No, no, I'm saying yeah, that, you, you know, know, a I read lot of posts people. every day, yeah. You Absolutely. notice, right? Ann Landers was 40 when she was 80. Yeah, yeah so. they, and they put her picture in there, and she had the big, like, hairdo from the 40s. No, he looks just like his picture still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like it. I mean, there's other guys, you, you, you see him on the news or something, and go, oh, my God, time to update the picture that's yeah. been in the paper the last 20 or 30 years. Look, well, Ellen's dancing no with the way. whole audience. She's dancing, and the whole audience is dancing. It, 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 Enough with the Ellen dancing thing. It kills five to ten minutes every day on our on our show. We should Man, just dance. You believe that. <laughs> That's great for radio. Why isn't not? It? We would we would have we would do less show. We're all about less show, Anthony. You dance, I'll watch. If it means I'm not dancing. if it means talking less, I'll, I'll take the bullet. I'll take the, the bullet. They made a bigger thing out of that dancing than we even thought they would. We I'm thought she was going to start dancing out on the stage when she walked out, but now they're making a whole thing of it. But it's not a gimmick, though. She's you think she's, she's just really that, that happy. happy? She's really that happy? She does this every day? Every, every day. day. This is her thing, Mike. This every is, day. This is her thing. It started out as just a little goof thing that she did one day, and then, uh, oh, you want me to dance? Oh, oh he's going <laughs> to dance. Safety dance, you Do the asked. safety dance, Opie. <laughs> That's okay. Look, Ellen's dancing again. She sat back down, dancing again. Mm. No? I think I think she's just celebrating life. She must have great. Think? Yeah, that's that's she's all that that's happy. Yeah, she is. She must have great producers for her show. It's like, hey man, we don't have much crap for today, so just dance a little extra. Just and, have me dance, and we'll get to the end of the program. All right, I'll dance from uh, I don't know what, it, what what time is it? Ten o'clock. I'll dance from ten till ten twenty. And then how much show do we really have to do? Because yeah, we have uh, Ben and everyone, you know, they, they come up with stuff when they know we've run out of gas. Uh -huh. You know, I'd, so you got to thank the producers on that show. Just dance a little more. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get to the, the, the rolling of the credits. I'm sure Tony will rip this off like he does with every other thing on his show. Hey, you, you could call me Tony Dancer. That's what I'll do. I'll just come out. I'll dance a little bit. It'll be great, huh? Tony Danza. We haven't played audio oh, from segment. We haven't played audio from Tony Danza in a long time. Oh, we should do that next week. You know something? Bit. I was I was watching uh, the other day and he was doing more. They would just applaud anything during his monologue. Yeah, his applause breaks. You see, he's like, hey, I went uh, I went out to some great place. I had a uh, I had spaghetti last night. It was fantastic. Everybody, fantastic. They're applauding him eating spaghetti. It's the cult of Danza. <laughs> Yeah, the cult of Danza. <laughs> they sit there and it doesn't matter what he's talking about. You know, I was driving in and uh, I got to tell you, those Firestone tires are fantastic. <laughs> and the, the crowd is, yeah, Firestone tires, Tony. It's another, great. Another thing he does is he talks about his daughter a lot. He's like, I was helping her um, with her uh, study for a spelling test. And guess what? She got 100. Hey, hey she got 100 on it. Like anyone cares. Whoa. You know, how about that self-serve at the gas station? Whoa, what's, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Oh, no. <laughs> what is Alan saying about that? I hate to do this because most people... It's, uh, it's a makeover show on eight-year-olds. <laughs> Oh, my God. I don't know. Whoa, whoa. What is she doing? She's having some contests about bad school photos. Bad school photos? That kid has Down syndrome. Yeah, she went a little a bad school photo. That's a poor child. That's that's bad DNA, not a bad photo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Look at that first one. That's not a bad school children, photo. Children of thalidomide. Segment. I can win that with my, my uh, college photo. Really? You got a bad one? Oh, you know, like when, if if someone takes like a roll of pictures of you, there's gonna be that one where your eyes are half closed and <laughs> right, look like you just yeah. got punched in the face. One, look at the photos they took yesterday, Bill. There's a million of them up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid so, sneeze like that. picture. <laughs> so my best one was right next to the worst one, and I think I wrote down the wrong number. Oh, and there's no, no way the asshole didn't know, and they put it in my, put it in the yearbook. It's horrendous. Oh, that is horrible. <laughs> yeah, I've I didn't, I didn't even buy the yearbook. It was uh, oh, an all right. Awful moment. Was that on the, the fellowship uh, college? No, no, it should be Emerson College. The <laughs> Addies are all black and white. All right. Well, <laughs> the big eyes, you got to stay still for a long time. <laughs> we got audio of uh, Robert Blake after his uh, verdict. Shut up. Robert Blake. Mike, were you following this case at all, the Robert Blake case? I know you're more into sports, but... As little as possible, oh, but, yeah. uh, but the the verdict did interest me. And well, it, it, it took four or five years, right? I'm surprised it took as long as it did. They pretty much got the O.J. thing uh, through with... It was pretty quick, What happened you know? to your right to, to a speedy trial? To a speedy trial, I would think they could throw the case out just to the fact that it took so goddamn long to bring this to trial. It was on the air longer than Beretta was, I think. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> Beretta.
He was acting like Beretta uh, at the press conferences too. He was throwing out some some little things. Uh, With the sparrow there. Some uh, Beretta isms. <laughs> yeah, his little cockatoo on his. <laughs> yeah, now that he's free, he's uh, going back to the tough guy. He's a little cocky. But now he's, he's back to the tough guy. He looked very uh, wimpy and scared for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, he he kind of was crying and laughing at the same time when they announced that he was not guilty. And I told Anthony we we came in one of the, I don't know a couple days ago and and the you know the jury was still out. I looked right at Anthony. I'm like, Don, he's getting off. You, they the, took way too long. The problem people have is this conception that the jury finds you guilty or not guilty of a crime. It's not not true. Uh, when a jury finds you guilty of a crime, uh, or, or or like Beretta, they find him innocent. It, it's not that you didn't do it. You just didn't leave enough evidence for them to find you guilty of it. Well, I like because people, yeah, people said that famous people get off, and I want to know is, you know, does, does he really qualify as a famous person anymore? I know. What was the last time? What was the last thing he really did that people really paid attention to? Lost Do you know? Wasn't he in the Little Rascals what? back when? The Little Rascals, good, and Beretta, and and Beretta. That's it. After that's that, it's just little roles, and no one really cared about him. All right. All right. Well, we got some audio of uh, Robert Blake after the verdict here. Let's, let's listen in. You've interviewed my friends. You've interviewed producers that work for me. You've interviewed distant relatives and close, immediate relatives. You've interviewed, hey, I lived in his house. I know him. I know him inside out. Well, guess what? They're all liars. And about half of them are commode scum. Who are out to hustle you to make a buck in the streets? And that's over the name my of that tune. Hopefully, dead ass. Well, they missed their bet. God, you're commode scum. Right, look, look, freeze, commode scum. Pulls he, out his piece. He should just shut his mouth and go home. Yeah. That was he, a, he did it. That There's was no a, doubt in my mind the guy did it. I now, never pulled a rod out on that dame. That sounded like a Beretta monologue, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> it was one of his monologues. He was telling the old rummy. Commode scum? <laughs> What's commode scum? You're commode scum. Look here, rummy. <laughs> you ain't never seen me pull a rod on no broad. <laughs> Go home and keep your trap shut. <laughs> he knows he did it. He got lucky. Well, he he I did think he, get lucky. He had somebody do it. You, you think? think somebody did it? Like, I'm going to go into the restaurant, blow our brains out, leave, and I, then I mean, uh, I'll come out and go, oh, my God. If he didn't do it, he knows who did I mean, Yeah. And you just, I mean, what are the odds of that? I hate my wife. I'm going to kill you. I wish you were dead. Oh, how convenient. Yeah, when I, I went back out to the restaurant and I came back, thank God. Someone anonymously just shot her for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. The left was never caught. If things would have gone differently, you think he would have given the same speech as Cell Block B last night, too? I don't think so. <laughs> Why don't you just sit and wait for the sports segment? <laughs> I, 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 I liked that one. It was all right. Well, that was good, right, Bill? Hey, brought him in early. He's got to make his comments. I think there's a little teasing, tension between Mike Vaccaro from the New York Post and Anthony. No tension yeah. at all. Are you a Red Sox fan? Me, no. I'm straight down the middle. I actually grew up a Mets fan. So oh, really? I'm, like, I'm kind right. of cute. I think Mets fans argument. are very cute. I think They're all like, <laughs> I like everyone. I think that's I'm what a Mets fan. Ed's picking up on. And now you made him blush. He's turning no. very red. Like no, they, they, chant, they, they chant Bill Buckner at us Red Sox fans. Well, that's true. Here, they, so well, but they'll always have that to hold over the Sox. Yeah, but now it's nice. funny. After last year, I actually saw a picture of it. Someone held it up. Now, now it's, it's funny. funny. Now you guys can get over it. won, it's over. As long as they don't say 1918 Babe Ruth. Yeah. Whatever. I know, it does it. suck that that's gone. No, it doesn't. It's kind of fun wonderful. to have that. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. All right, let's uh, play another clip from Robert Blake after the verdict. I wasn't concentrating on the verdict. I was concentrating on my grandbaby being born healthy and strong. Lies. If that sounds crazy, people have always said I'm crazy. And that's all right. Just so I ain't a fool. Uh, what? Huh? What? Hmm. I think he thought he was going to get convicted, so he didn't have this speech prepared. He so didn't he have, like, an I'm acquitted speech? Yeah, he just kind of went. <laughs> Look, I may be going away for a lot of years, but... Oh, wait, hmm. wrong speech. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can lock me up and throw away the key, but I'm... Hmm. <laughs> I, uh... Wait, well, he just winged it. Yeah, he, he pretty much blew off everyone in Hollywood calling them asses and, and commode scum. He figured he'd be in prison. He's not doing movies. Now he's not going to get another job. And when I find Jerry, God brought him into my life. His lawyer. He'll never be rich. I thought he meant sign. And he'll never be famous. Because he don't know nothing about money. And he has no idea what to do with you people. 
but by God, he can save lives, and that'll keep him warm on any cold night in his life. What an ass. I said he's kind of insulting his lawyer. He don't know nothing. I ain't going to pay him. My lawyer's an idiot. He's a babbling buffoon. They were talking in the paper how much money he spent on his uh, on his case. Ten mil? Something like that. I think the lawyer made a pretty penny off Robert Blake. A pretty penny. A pretty penny, yeah. You're, you're talking like he Well, <laughs> he made a pretty penny off of me. Protecting me against that commode scum. Did you see Access Hollywood? How they handled that whole thing? You just got off murder, still a woman has died, and then just like, is Robert Blake employable? And they were just asking people around Hollywood, Drew Barrymore, what do you think? And they're just sitting there like, but, I don't think I'm qualified to answer that question. One of Anthony's new impressions, uh, he, he imitates like these stupid uh, tabloid shows. Oh, that's the all uh, uh, that's Hollywood. Uh, Celebrity Justice, right? Was it Celebrity Justice? I think the, with the girl with the real hack voice? Yeah. Oh, do we have Celebrity Justice music or uh, Access Hollywood music? One of those shows? I love those shows. They come on and just babble about uh, things like the uh, Robert Blake trial and things it's like so that. Not even the important aspects of it. Is he that employable? That somebody's dead. Yeah, someone's dead. This woman's still dead, and they talk about is he employable? What Will do you think? he start I'll... coloring his hair? A love story or action flicks? What direction? <laughs> what direction will Robert Blake take? Hmm. Robert Blake. He's been acquitted of murdering his wife. Now, how will Hollywood respond to this former child yak cure? <laughs> that hack voice. That hack voice. We've talked to other celebrities that have worked with him in the past. Now, will they once again put Robert Blake in front of the cameras? We'll find out on Access Hollywood. <laughs> oh, that awful voice. They put the hot chick, the low-cut shirt... She's talking about someone that's dead. Pretty much a murder happened. Eh, she don't care. Will Robert Blake appear in an episode of The O.C.? <laughs> Rumor has it. <laughs> He's going to take on the role of an angry grandfather in The O.C. <laughs> we'll talk to producers of The O.C. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> they just don't care about the meat and potatoes of it, that someone's dead, and he probably the did camera. it. Camera. Camera. We took our all-access cameras behind the scenes in the courtroom to talk to Robert Blake. We didn't understand a word this cuke was saying. <laughs> and they always tie it into a, a Britney Spears story or yeah. something. It's just, what? I thought you were talking about Blake. Yeah. And that's the name of that tune. And speaking of tunes, a new one by Christina Aguilera. <laughs> Here's more Robert Blake. I'm going to get a job. I'm broke. Right now, price? I couldn't buy spats for a hummingbird. What did Johnny Carson, Johnny, Johnny Cotton say? What? You're innocent until proven broke. Well, by the time Jerry and these troops got here, it was the bottom of the barrel. I was a rich man. I'm broke now. I got to go to work. Okay. He can't afford a speechwriter either. He spats for a hummingbird? That's what he said he couldn't afford. Yeah. He, well, he is old. Okay, I'll give him that. I was thinking kind of the Patty thing. I can't afford spats for a hummingbird. <laughs> 20, Probably heard that around the house. 23 skidoo. <laughs> 23 skidoo. <laughs> when was the last time spats were used? What is a spat? I don't, I don't even know what it was. I'm glad you spats. said that. I have no Wait, idea. you know what a spat is? Yeah, a spat. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Here we Forget go. Forget Aristotle and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor Anthony. You do not know what a spat is. In the olden days, Opie, yeah. shoes, mm -hmm. uh, well, they weren't as, as nice as they are now. Things like laces okay. and the tongues of the shoe. <laughs> okay. uh, you, they didn't really help sealing out water or anything like that like they do now. So there was something, and also they weren't very attractive. They were used to uh, dress up your, your shoes. They were called spats. They went over the tops, the top front of your shoes. They covered up your unsightly shoes and covered up where the, the laces were. Spats. Forget Aristotle <laughs> and fuck Socrates. Here comes Professor Anthony. Did you use it in a sentence? <laughs> um, okay. I'm getting dressed up for the cotillion this evening. <laughs> I need some spats. No? I don't know. We have no idea if it's right or wrong. Uh, yeah, spats for a hummingbird still makes no sense. Hey, I want to make a quick comparison here. Because I guess they'd be pretty small, so uh, pretty cheap. Yeah. But actually, it would probably be expensive to make spats for a hummingbird, considering how small they are and the fine craftsmanship yeah, that would have to go into 
making spats. Oh, there you go. There a picture you go. of a spat. There's a picture of a spat. Men's goes black and white spats. Your shoes. All right. I want to. Oh, I always thought those were for rich people. I want to do. They a, are. Spats pretty much. Uh, uh, the rich folks wore the spats. I want to do oh, a comparison, spats. Anthony. We were just talking to, you know, playing the audio of Robert Blake. He's yeah. now the tough guy now that he's uh, been, uh, you know, let off the hook there, right? Tough guy. Here's some audio of him talking to Barbara Walters. It's a little different, right, Art? Mm -hmm. They took away my entire past. They took away my entire future. What's left for them to take? You're going to take my testicles and make earrings out of them? <laughs> Do you think I'm a monster too? No. That I can't Robert, pick up my own baby and know that she's mine. I'm not a monkey. I'm not a fool. Either they're lying or I'm lying. <laughs> wow. He lost it right there. What a difference, I huh? Don't, that's the name of that. You can take that to the bank. Hey, Rummy. What a difference. Same guy that did this. Now I gotta go back to this. I'm kind of glad he's free. I just want to keep hearing these quotes. I know. Make what? Earrings Testing, out of his... Make earrings out of my testicles. testicles. How the hell do you make do my that? my testicles and make earrings out of them? <laughs> Who the hell does that? I don't know. Yeah, we don't need to play that again. So, there you go. Robert cool. Blake is uh, free you gotta get, you looking gotta get, for work. you got to get that one where he tells the press to shut up. Yeah. When yeah. he walks away from the microphone, they go, uh, so who did kill your wife? And he comes walking back and he goes, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> press conference is over. He was leaving the mics. Yeah. Why and don't we have somebody, that clip? Somebody asked. That's a great one. Okay. Wow. Shut up. Now, what's going on with Letterman? Eh, shut yeah. up. <laughs> Letterman's uh, kid was almost kidnapped in Montana? Some creep. Some guy that was painting his ranch. He has a ranch in Montana, David Letterman. And his nanny and uh, little, little kid. A kidnapping of David Letterman's ranch? A painter is now a suspect in a kidnapping of David Letterman's child and his nanny. How will this affect how he was painting the room? We'll find out what color paint he was using to paint the baby's room. And other important things, like did it match the carpet? Awful. Yeah, some creep painter was uh, painting the house, took pictures of his house, and uh, was planning on kidnapping David Letterman's child. For $5 million, right? Yeah, some big ransom. He was going to hold him, and he was going to kidnap the nanny so the nanny could take care of the kid uh, while the kid was um, being held. They said he was going to hold him for like 48 hours, uh, get the ransom money. Because kidnappings just work all the time. <laughs> I was say that. Is there one kidnapping that has actually worked where you take somebody, uh, you charge a ransom, you get the ransom, they get back the person? That trick never works. <laughs> that whole <laughs> gag. Ew, let me pull a ransom out of my head. <laughs> right. <laughs> what it you're going to do is leave a pile works. of money at the mailbox. Yeah. No one will be watching from above, I'm sure. There's just always <laughs> that thing. You have to, at some point, get the money. Right. And the money has to, at some point, be put somewhere by somebody that doesn't like you. <laughs> right. That wants you arrested. It's not your pal dropping the money off. It's somebody that wants to catch you and kill you. And meanwhile, you have to get that money. So that whole crossover thing, that's the sticky point of any kidnapping. So they never work. They'll always get you. People that try to kidnap are morons. And this guy had a plan. He invited a friend in on the plan and said, uh, I have this idea, kidnapping Letterman's kid. I got pictures of the place. I know the layout. I have a key to it because I'm doing work there. Because they never suspect somebody that's doing work in the place. Yeah, that, inside job. That's never the first suspect. Unbelievably stupid. <laughs> so he tells his friend. His friend goes, all right, I'll think about it. The second the door shut, the guy was calling the cops and uh, turned the guy in. They arrested him. And um, he could get like four years, I guess, because he didn't actually go through with it. But right. planning it is just as bad. So David Letterman, who went years with that Mrs. David Letterman kook stalker. Yeah. Remember what, her? Margaret uh, Mary Ray, right? Yeah. Margaret Mary Ray uh, was stalking David Letterman calling herself Mrs. David Letterman, going into his house, living there as his wife until he would show up and go, what are you doing here? You have to call the cops. She finally, uh, he finally got away from her. She knelt down in front of a train in like 98, something like that. Yeah, she kneeled in front of a train. Yeah, yeah. exactly, 1998. And that that was out of his hair, but uh, now Here's he's the new cook. Now uh, he's cook. got this to deal with. Yeah. And if he, if he, what, if he doesn't even go to jail, because sometimes that, that happens too. Say, hey, I didn't do anything. I was talking. You know, it was one of those fantasy things that, oh, well, I, I sat down with a friend and thought I could do this, but I didn't actually plan it and blah, blah, blah. You could get off the hook, maybe. 
And then uh, David Letterman's got to worry. This nuts running around. Why have kids? Do you have kids? Me? No. No? No. They just seem like a big pain in the ass. You gotta worry about you gotta worry about them all the time. Just kidnappers, rapists, animals, our audience. <laughs> it's like one of those things. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, a namesake. Wouldn't it be nice to pass that? No, forget it. <clears throat> Too much trouble. Can't spontaneously go to gigs. Imagine if you had to go to gigs <laughs> and you gotta leave a kid somewhere with somebody. I don't know like the Michael Jackson. That's what's, that's gonna happen to us eventually, like it did with Metallica. Why? We'll have kids, and we'll no do these kids. road shows, and there'll be a little area where the kids play while we look at boobies on stage. A little stage. playpen <laughs> yeah. off the stage. <laughs> when, we, when we saw Metallica, remember uh, Lars's kid was wandering around the stage during some of the songs? Do you Didn't remember seeing that? they played drums? Well, I, I think they let one of the kids oh <laughs> play God, drums. Are you it's kidding? Well, I'm kidding. kind of ruins that whole Metallica image, well, doesn't it? it's James Hetfield's doing, man. He, he wants to be more involved with his family, and he's bringing family into the mix. Family, family, family. So next thing you know, uh, I think it was Lars's kid got loose, and he starts wandering around the drum, the drum kit. And so oh, Lars is, Lars is uh, giving him the sticks to play a little bit. Ring, 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 banana, fona. <laughs> Starts singing children's songs. Well, all right. All right, we've we got to move on to uh, Mike Vaccaro from the New York Post. Finally, he sat out there for an hour and a half with the fine couple from Omaha. That's right. Well, I, saw, I saw the pictures, so I don't, I don't mind being bumped. You didn't mean, that was a wise editorial choice. Oh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you got this new book. It's called what? Emperors and Idiots. Emperors and Idiots, and it's a, a whole book about the Red Sox and the Yankees and the feuding they do and yep. all that, right? Going all the way back to 1903, and but focusing on the last two years where it really kind of Went into outer space with the uh, with the uh, with the feuding. Now you're talking. Who are the bigger assholes, Yankee fans or Sox fans? It depends. I mean, I think I think whichever team is winning. I mean, the Yankees fans up until last year were, but the uh, Red Sox fans I've talked to the last couple of years. Who is more obsessed kind of with the other team? Uh, the Red Sox fans have been far more Thank the you. Yankees. There's no question about Anytime that. Anytime you get three or more people in a room together in Boston, you will hear a Yankee suck chant. You're right. It does not matter where they are. Yeah, but anybody can be graceful when you're winning. That's my thing, you know. Of course, but if they're losing, have been. <laughs> if they're <laughs> losing, do you think that's it? Yeah, yeah. It's just an obsession. Because Steinbrenner has always had that whole, you know, Yankees. We got we're a cut above with our class. Right. And you saw those couple of calls went against them. You know that A Rod slapping the ball. They had to bring the riot police out. People were throwing shit. Up. Anybody can be class. Like Patriots fans are classy now because we're winning. Right. After right. After 40 years of urinating in the stands and just being complete pigs. But the, the, I could understand being. Pigs and 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 such, but I can't understand the obsession that Sox fans have with the Yankees. It's because like, enjoy your team, love your team, support your team, but the obsession with the Yankees suck, and that whole thing made no sense anyway. How do you say a team sucks when they've consistently kicked your ass for umpteen years? Oh yeah, years? That, that was ridiculous. But the thing I love about Yankees fans is they any opportunity they had to rub it in our face <laughs> of how much we sucked. They would do it, and then all of a sudden, then we respond to it, and they're like, whoa, hey, well, where, did, where did that come from? I even saw Regis Philburn. It's like, hey, you know, you won it. You know, relax, okay? And, and enjoy it. It's like we're being the same assholes. we got to make up for 85 years. Well, it's actually the last, like, six or seven years where it just got, with ESPN, 24 hours of being on and just yeah. constantly, you know, fueling that. You know, it, it just got out of control. Yeah. The Yankee fans need a new chant now. I mean, they can't go with 1918 anymore. 1918 so they, was always a big one. I guess but you got to go back to Red Sox suck. I mean, it's, it's, unless I can think of something better. Other people have, you know, had to deal with that and have overcome. I remember, you know, uh, the Islander fans used to just taunt oh, the Rangers with, with that one. 1940. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was always, it's always nice when you could have a year that was, you know, when <laughs> Patty was in college, some way back uh, <laughs> older times, but... I'm you know, now Sox, that's gone. I'm hoping the Sox fans are going to have the brains to chant year 2000. Even though it's still of course they will. It's only been like that five is years, funny. But it's just that is very funny. No, because funny. when the Rangers won the Stanley Cup, I forgot the last year the Islanders won it. Maybe Mike. 83. 83. 83. Yeah. They started the 1983 chant. Yeah. yeah. Not quite as. It doesn't have quite a ring to it. You know? But yeah, they you will definitely. Not even off the tongue. It, <laughs> they will definitely yeah. start the 2000 chant. Oh, yeah. yeah, and opening day, it starts. Year but I don't like that version. Year 2000. Year 2000. Year 2000. you got to make it fit. Year yeah. 2000. The best uh, Islander, uh, Ranger chant for the Islanders is Potvin beats his wife. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Anytime he was on the ice. Well, oh. no, he retired 20 years ago, yeah, and yeah. they still have that chant. Still do it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. 
just brutal people out there. So the book goes back to 1903, talking about the, oh. the, the the feud between the Yankees and the and the Red Sox. That's right. Yeah, I mean the the, uh, the second game the two teams ever played against each other, there was a collision at first base, and they almost had a brawl. This was at a time when you had tough guy baseball players never got into a fight over things on a baseball field, and these two teams almost did. So I guess that kind of sowed the seeds a little bit. Uh, mm. But uh, nothing like we've seen the last couple of years. Every time you go up to get a baseball game now between these two teams, it's like going to an NASCAR event. You know, you, you kind of hope for a crash, and maybe if a race breaks out, that's fine too. It's the same thing with these two teams. Going to be trading a little paint, as they say. <laughs> that's right. You know, I mean, last year, you know, you, you think everything's gone on in the 2003 uh, playoff series. Last year, you show up at Fenway Park, and suddenly A-Rod and Varitek are at each other's throat, literally, and you kind of look at each other, you know, every time you think that it's gotten more surreal, something else happens. Right. Mm-hmm. Love it. Do you think that's good or bad? I mean, I think it's I think I think it's great. I mean, I think it's I think it'd be bad if it if it got to be a thing where it was every inning there was something. But I do think the <laughs> fact that uh, that the teams kind of show that they hate each other as much as the fans have shown they yeah, hate they each really other. Yeah, they really do. There is just a hatred there. I mean, especially with A Rod. I mean, you know, it was funny during spring training they would go up and down the Red Sox locker room and say, "Why do you hate A Rod? Why do you hate A Rod? Why do you hate A Rod?" And the Red Sox, being the Red Sox, they pretty much gave a gave a ten ten minute uh, long because, sermon every day because he didn't come here to the Sox. Right. That's pretty much it. Well, that and you know, last year he had that great picture of him slapping the ball out of Bronson Arroyo's hands, which is kind of the picture that Red Sox fans love to see because it was A-Rod because it was the Yankees. I think that was a bad call. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think you should have I been gotta safe. Admit, I didn't know you couldn't do that. Yeah, why like, not? can't do that? I did that in school. <laughs> it was like when I was playing baseball. <laughs> you whack Sox- it, you call him a dick, and you're on first. And as a Red Sox fan, you had to think that that was you know the, the way it was going to happen last year. That was how they were going to lose it because it was... Oh, yeah, yeah. It always happens on that. Yeah, that had years, to be something Yankee fan, stupid. They, they, they've pulled ball, like pop flies into the stands, umpires. It, it's like wrestling. They just don't see it. <laughs> home run! That's a home run, everybody! Like wrestling. Well, the, well, the great one... <laughs> Earlier in that game, remember the, uh, the, the there was the home run that hit the guy in the, in the bleachers yep. in the chest, yep. and the umpire didn't see it hit him in the chest. I mean, that's that, that's the kind of thing that always happens. The Yankees yep. only they usually keep the calls. Yeah, and this year we finally got the calls. But I mean, I don't know it, the, the amount of guys that they can go out and get every year. Well, they had a rough you know. off season, man. David Wells isn't going to do anything for the Sox. Be honest. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. you never know. You lose, I, I, you lose that's, Pedro that's, that's, and you get David Wells. Think. That's Oof. what I would think. Yeah. I mean, but I come mean, on, you got to be honest about that. And I'm not a Yankee fan. I'm more of a Met fan. Well, and I, I actually we I, won it last year, so th- it's just like it's, I'd it's rather crazy. see the Sox win it over the Yankees. But ugh. I'm just hoping the Yankees don't come back and win it this year, so they can be oh, never come right, back. Got normal. that over with. <laughs> yeah, two thousand four, whatever. They, oh God, here it goes again. Just give me a couple of years. You want a little bit? Because you know what's gonna happen. I mean, every year they pick up like. Like two first ballot Hall of Famers, and then like, like a Kenny Loft, and he's like garbage to them. It's just like <laughs> you, you it's, walk it's, into the Yankees' clubhouse, it's like walking into a live action rotisserie draft. I mean, everybody or an All Star game. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. amazing. yeah. Well, you know something, and the the way it happened last year, uh, the, if it would have been a bunch of nice close games, it would have gone uh, right up to the last game. But the way the 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 Yankees just choked. And just lost. It was supposed. The st- it was in the stars. The Yankees were supposed to win. It, how they just dropped like that and just screwed up like that. That's the one thing it, we got it, is you. you that's you, worse. You can than never just, beat that. You can right, never right. beat that collapse. If you right. look at the names on that roster, that is an awful collapse. It's just, uh, I mean, baseball have been waiting a hundred years for a team to blow a three nothing lead, and who yeah. ever thought it would be the Yankees against the Red against Sox? Against the Sox. That's what annoys me more than, team. than them just winning. You know, all right. The Sox won. Well, it was a close game. It was good. It was this, that. But to have the Yankees just self-destruct like that, yeah. it was uh, you couldn't see it when they dropped the first game after you know they they won. They, they needed one more game. You know, it was done. It was over. I was coming in here going, Ben, <laughs> you Sox, huh? It, Screw it. And then even Ben admitted it yeah. was over. And then the Sox win one game. It's like oh, ah, when, I had to give when one. When they lost 19 to eight, I was like, you know what? This is great. Yeah. They usually drag it out seven games. That's great. Put two in the back of my head. Right. Just painless. end it. End right. it immediately. And that's what I was thinking. I oh, was that looking who's at your daddy game? Oh, I mean, the was, who's your daddy that was, game. <laughs> that was the most humiliating. As a Red Sox fan, I sat yeah. through like, oh, it was just like, this is like a prison rape. This isn't even like a game. It just was on all levels. We were just getting trashed. That's why it made the final victory so much better for the Sox fans and so much worse for the Yankees fans. And I think you know it was it, awful. It, it strikes me that uh, the people f- around the country fell in love with the Red Sox so much that they didn't give the, the Yankees nearly as much grief for for, for blowing a three nothing lead as think, they did for the Sox. For I think winning, it's almost right. now people are like remembering. That's right, they blew that three nothing lead. Certainly <laughs> screwed that up. Yeah, but how can you feel bad? I mean, it's like 
No, you. No, they can just fall back on their 26 champions and their 40 <laughs> pennants. That's not even feeling bad. I mean, I, I think they've deserved a lot more scorn than they've gotten because I mean that was the that, that was an epic collapse. I yeah, mean, that you, was. You can't, you've never worst seen it in before. baseball history. It's never happened before. That's it. The worst. And now at the uh, opening day that we're going to be at, uh, they get to get their rings right there in front of the Yankees. Well, I think the Yankees, they're, they're like experts at like the media thing, because if, if they came out and all started pointing fingers and screaming at each other, they didn't. They just kept going like, the Red Sox were the better team. Yeah. They deserved to win it. It's like and, the step uh, team. Yeah, and they, <laughs> yeah. Just, they just shut up. You know, you know the Yankees, they all got the same haircut. Media no one savvy. Can have a mustache. <laughs> We got Mr. A, Steinbrenner is a wonderful individual. <laughs> That's the only thing I because you know they talk all kinds of shit. Of course. Let's go to Matt in Boston. Matt, not in the press though. Hey. 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 Hey, Anthony. Yeah. Y two K. Uh oh. Uh oh. Very Y two K. That's good. That's good. Uh oh. They're already practicing chants and trying to figure out which one is the best. That's very good. We're going to be broadcasting live from opening day in Boston, so we can't wait. We're going to be uh, live at Bill's Bar in Boston on Lansdowne Street, April 11th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're doing the show that day on, yeah. on East Coast time, and yeah, it's going to be uh, unbelievable. Sox and Yankees going at it again. What else is in this book there, Mike? Well, I mean, the, uh, the, there's a chapter dedicated to all the brawls that have happened all through history, and there have been some, some, some crazy ones. I mean, the, the one that still, I think, sticks with everybody's mind is the one uh, when uh, when Pedro uh, oh, did drop, Zim. dropped Zim, and that's the, actually the cover of the book. So. Oh, it is? Because I mean, even, though, even though those two guys, you know, the Zim's not a Yankee anymore and Pedro's not a Red Sox, I mean, it's almost like that picture kind of symbolizes the whole thing. Yeah. Know? He was just pushing him away. Yeah. It, oh, they made it sound like he just clocked him yeah, in the face. He was, it was, he was, he was like pushing the, the old codger. It was like a bull charging. He was just kind of pushing him out of the way. Yeah, was, he, he, had, he had three options. You either you either like run away and yeah. you look like the biggest pussy ever. Yeah, because a 65 year old guy is yeah. running after you or, you or just, whatever. You just stand there and let the oldest guy on the other team bitch slap your ace pitcher, <laughs> right. or you grab him by his big Macy Day parade head and <laughs> toss him to the ground like a lawn dart. Uh, you made the right decision. You know something? Of, uh, put like that, you absolutely are right. I'm with Bill on this. That was the I funniest thing of all was watching Don Zimmer lumber over. I mean, because you could see it was almost happening in slow motion. Oh. And, and Pedro couldn't believe what he was that saying. Look, all of a sudden, yeah, that look of confusion. Like, uh, is, what, that, is this old guy rushing me? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? And he did. He just grabbed his big head and he kind of pushed <laughs> him aside. Yeah, he was put in a, uh, a bad position What there. a great clip that was. But it was a great. It was almost a great sense of timing because he was hit. You know, he had his, his momentum of a you know 90-year-old, 200-pound man. All of a sudden, just all you do is like tap him, and he just, oh, he just, just slightly just, out he did of the way. Manix roll for him, that and it was great. That divot is still in the in the grass there. <laughs> the dugout from his big head. That's great. <laughs> Any other fights? Like maybe an older one that was uh, well. I mean, the great, yeah. I mean, you know, there, 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 there was one that uh, that uh, took place between uh, Billy Martin and Jimmy Pearsall back in the day. Talk about two two uh, two crazy guys. And uh, I mean, the long and the short of the argument is that Billy Martin had made a. A video for kids at that spring, how to slide into second base, and of course, in making the video, he broke his ankle sliding into second base, which is which is perfect. So, so Pearsall, who drunk. yeah, Pearsall, who you know, he spent some time in a nut house. I mean, you know, started started getting on him one day, and you know, started pretending like he was taking a picture of him, and, and Martin just went oh, crazy, man. and you know, invited him to the to the dugout, and you know, as with most of uh, Martin's fights, he took one punch, and the guy was on the ground, but. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was probably the most volatile of them. And then, you know, Carlton Fisk and Thurman Munson back in the '70s. Every time they got together, it seemed like it was 15 rounds, which uh, you know, two great catchers, and they hated they hated each other beyond words. I miss uh, Billy Martin. Oh, oh yeah, that guy. Was, that guy provided endless material for you. Great you entertainment, what. man. Yeah. Remember the time you thought he, him and uh, um, uh, Jackson were going to go at it? At Fenway, at Fenway Park, too. That happened at Fenway. Yeah. And, they uh, pulled him out of the game because yeah. he didn't hustle on that. Right. And they, <laughs> and then Reggie's right in his face. And Billy, I, you thought that they never, I don't think they swung, though, right? They never did, but only because uh, the coaches, like, took him from behind. Right, made right. Sure they, made, made sure they didn't. But uh, but uh, there's no question that Billy would have taken a swing at that guy. No question. <laughs> Definitely my favorite Yankee. Hmm? Yeah. That's my favorite, yeah. Reggie, or, yeah, B- Reggie or Billy? Uh, Billy. Okay. Billy Martin. Oh, I hated Reggie Jackson back in the day, but you know, it's just when he's playing, but now you look back, you got to respect the guy. He was unbelievable, you know? Yeah. So what about the steroids there, Mike? Wasn't yesterday something else? I mean, you Well, know. we got clips. We got oh a lot of clips. Oh, my God. We're, 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 Sam McGuire. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm lo- going to hear losing this. Losing it. Did he cry in his opening statement? Yeah, I mean, that, which, which, which is incredible because it's, you know, the, the, the guy's been known to cry more than Mike Schmidt now. And, and, and uh, to cry over what he was crying about. You I, mean, could, was, I know. It was a little weird. It was like, what is he? This isn't that big a deal. He it's was reciting like, a sentence and it was causing him to get all, all yeah. upset. That was crazy. And he, it, it was on TV yesterday that you could not get away from it. Every channel. Boom, boom. I, uh, <laughs> 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 it's like McGuire just crying. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like when he knocked the home runs out. They showed montages of all of his home runs going over the wall. It was him crying. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. why he's crying, because they, they think, you know, it's going to taint it, obviously. That's what he was thinking, and that's why he didn't uh, answer their question. Well, they asked is, him. If any of us in this room went before that, that board and, and, and decided to explain why he wasn't answering the questions, as opposed to just taking the fifth, yeah. what would happen to any of us? I mean, it, it's, a, it's amazing how arrogant ball players can become when they yep. realize, you know, they, they have no idea what, you know, what they room asked they're him. in. Are you taking the fifth? And he, he, <laughs> he, he didn't even say yes or no to that. No, he didn't. He didn't answer to whether he was taking the fifth or not. Right. He, he just said, I'm not going to talk about my past. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to say yes or no. And he gave reasons why yes is bad and no is bad. And meanwhile, the other guy's like, I never did steroids. Never, ever. That motherfucker sitting over there is a liar. Jose, you know, Jose Canseco. Canseco. What an idiot. Sitting there with that huge... You see the size of his shoulders? Yeah. Yeah, he's still taking them. He's still taking them. I don't think steroids. he's on the wagon at all, no. <laughs> he is still taking them. The guy is giant. It just helps him take out the trash. He doesn't, <laughs> yeah. he doesn't break down around November when all that holiday <laughs> trash comes in. He needs, he needs to stay he needs in shape. He needs that upper body, man. Well, let's go to the statement from Mark McGuire, the opening right. statement. My name is Mark McGuire. I played the game of baseball since I was nine years old. I was privileged to be able to play 15 years in the major leagues. I even had the honor of representing my country in the 1984 Olympic baseball team. I love and respect our national pastime. I will do everything in my power to help the game, its players, and fans. <clears throat> uh -oh. First and foremost, my heart goes out to every parent whose son or daughter were victims of steroid use. Oh, no. Yeah. I hope that these hearings can prevent other families from suffering. Oh, Come on, Mark. Hold it together, baby. Oh, please. Suck Hang in up. there, buddy. Hang in there. <clears throat> Come on. You can do it, buddy. Two more sentences. Come on. Come on. I admire the parents who had the courage to appear before the committee and warn the dangers of steroid use. My heart goes out to them. Yeah. When I was lucky enough to secure my last major league contract, one of the first things I did Jesus. was establish a foundation and donate $3 million of my own money to support abused children. I'd cry, too, if I gave up $3 million. He's crying right now. Yeah. Oh, boy. <clears throat> oh, come on. I applaud the work of the committee in exposing this problem so that the dangers are cl clearly understood. There has been a problem with steroid use in baseball. Like any sport, where there is pressure to perform at the highest level, and there has been no testing to control performance-enhancing drugs, problems develop. It is a problem, and that needs to be addressed. Most importantly, every little leaguer, pony league, high school, college player needs to understand that performance-enhancing drugs of any kind can be dangerous. I will use whatever influence and popularity that I have to discourage young athletes from taking any drug that is not recommended by a doctor. What I will not do, however, is participate in naming names and implicating my friends and teammates. Yeah, Jose. I retired from baseball four years ago. I live a quiet life with my wife and children. I've always been a team player. I've never been a person who spread rumors or said things about teammates that could hurt them. Yeah, Jose. Oh, God, he's breaking up again. I do not sit in judgment of other players. Jose. Whether it deals with their sexual preference, their marital problems, or other personal habits. You know, Jose's just twitching over in the corner. He oh, yeah. Including whether or not they <laughs> use chemical substance. Yeah. That has never been my style, and I do not intend to change this just because the cameras are turned on. Nor do I intend to dignify Mr. Conseco's book. It should, be, it should be enough that you consider the source of the statements in the book, Ooh. and that many inconsistencies and contradictions have already been raised. His lips are real dry. I've been advised that my testimony here could be used to harm friends and respected teammates, yeah. or that some ambitious prosecutor 
can use convicted criminals who would do and say anything to solve their own problems. Convicted criminals. And create jeopardy Great. for my friends. Asking me or any other player to answer questions about who took steroids in front of television cameras will not solve the problem. If a player answers no, he simply will not be believed. If he answers yes, he risks public scorn and endless government investigations. My lawyers have advised me that I cannot answer these questions without jeopardizing my friends, my family, and myself. I intend to follow their advice. It is my understanding that Major League Baseball and the Players Union have taken steps to address the steroid issue. If these policies need to be strengthened, I would support that. What's the hip hop? I appreciate the difficult job you have is that? as congressmen and congresswomen. It's just about over. And will use this opportunity to dedicate myself to this problem. I am directing my foundation to concentrate its efforts to educate children regarding dangers, dangers of performance-enhancing drugs. I am also offering to be well, spokesman for Major yeah. League Baseball and the Players Association to, to convince field. young athletes to avoid dangerous drugs of all sorts. Thank you very much. God, what a mess. There's vibrators going off in the background, hip-hop music. Phones. You can act like a man! <laughs> As uncomfortable as I was to watch yesterday, that was even worse to listen to. Oh, he's just the... the... Then... I'll help you oh. get rid of the drugs that this I used. Can say, I want to keep my records. Faggot. <laughs> oh, they hate, they hate Jose. Oh, my God. Jose had to be in a different room. They had all the other guys in one room uh, before they came out to testify. And then Canseco had to be in a separate private room. Oh, he's got to be the, the top five rats of oh, all time. come on. Yeah, he is. you got to put the mob rats right up there, you know? And then uh, he's he's got to be one of the top five. You're absolutely yeah. right. Jose the Bull. Jose the Bull Gravano. <laughs> Jose Here, the Bull Canseco. Here's some audio of Jose. It's a lot uh, quicker than the, the McGuire statement. Yeah. It has been said that this meeting is not about prosecution or individual use. Uh, if that were true... Granting immunity to me should not be an issue. Get although I have nothing Jose. to hide, and although my answers to your questions will be helpful in resolving uncertainties and issues facing this committee, because of my fear of future prosecution for probation violations or other unrelated charges, I cannot be totally candid with this committee. Now, when appropriate, will invoke the protections offered me by the Fifth Amendment. Yeah, because he wants to save for a second book. I know, right? Plead the Fifth. Means guilty. <laughs> Pleading oh, the yeah. fifth just absolutely means guilty. Yeah. If he, you didn't do it, you'd say you didn't do it. He is right, though. If they, the government would have given him immunity, he would have actually had a show yesterday because then he would have just probably just gone bang, 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 you know, and, and they will name names and yep. dates and places. But They won't give him immunity. Yeah. It would have been a, sh a real show, right? Yeah, but, but if you listen to him, he, he, he contradicts himself all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 how many times did you uh, inject, uh, you know, do steroids? Yeah. Before? Countless, countless, and then comes back. Uh, at least twice. Yeah, twice. It was like, countless. All right, it was countless. Now it's, I don't know. Means he has a hard time counting to two, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't count to two. <laughs> Are there any other highlights you want to listen to? He Kurt Schilling? Hated. Kurt Schilling was pretty good, right? Schilling was uh, well, just show. He's a professional, man. The guy knows how to sit there. You listen to Conseco. He's <laughs> he sounds like he had a Jolly Rancher in his mouth. Sounds the like guy, a bull. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what the what? what is that? And then McGuire, please. He's breaking up at every... He's breaking up at high. Yeah. Hello. Hello, committee. <laughs> we need the clip. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> I did keep waiting for a shilling to roll up his pant leg and reveal his bloody ankle. Yeah, look at my look what I pitched with. <laughs> has nothing to do with this, but I just want to show you. I'm a hero, god damn it. Shut has, up. Yeah, has nothing to do with all the drugs they pumped into that ankle so he didn't have to feel it. Yeah, now, now what the, the problem is, the whole issue with this is uh, the government wants a say in how steroids are dealt with in baseball. Baseball says that they can self-govern themselves. They'll, they'll do it themselves. If someone's doing steroids, we'll take care of it. We don't need the government stepping in there. I think, fine, keep the government out of anything, I think, is a good idea. Let them self-police themselves, because I don't give a crap. What is the problem if some guy wants to do steroids uh, to make himself a better ball player? It makes more entertaining games. 
You watch him smash that ball out of the park. I'm fine with it. Because the kids look up to these players, Anthony. Shut up with the kids. That's what they're the saying, The goddamn right, kids are ruining this country. Right. Right. I agree. Why can't us as adults have any type of entertainment whatsoever uh, without having to worry how it's going to affect the children? Right. I agree with Anthony. I mean, the fact is that uh, that uh, you know, if baseball fills an issue, then they should deal with the issue. I mean, I can't right. imagine that this, that this really affects somebody in Peoria very much. They're, and they're also saying uh, if someone's doing steroids, we'll deal with it. We'll... But the government's now pissed off because they're saying that they will cover things up under certain circumstances. They'll allow the players to pay ten thousand dollar a ten thousand dollar fine, and it won't make the news. Like they're, they're saying, they will deal with it with fines, but they'll cover it up and not make it uh, public. Okay, fine. Who cares if it's public? You don't see <laughs> Joe Average on the job at maybe IBM, failing his drug test and it making all the papers. They deal with it internally. Why shouldn't baseball be afforded that same convenience? Yeah, yeah. That's what I say. Let's try to keep the government out of our game, America's game. And remember, when you're watching baseball, smoke Lucky Strike cigarettes. Enjoy the smooth taste of Lucky. Live in your all-white neighborhood while you smoke Lucky Strike cigarettes. All of a sudden, we're in the 30s again. Yeah, I, I think keeping government out of baseball in any way, shape, or form, a good thing. And that's what the, the ball players are saying. That's what Schilling was saying also. Uh, he doesn't want the, the government in there. And who knows what the government would want regulated. They're pissed off because certain amphetamines aren't on the banned list in uh, baseball. They aren't banning it. Perhaps certain use of amphetamines is good in baseball. I don't know why, but maybe maybe it is. Maybe some of the stuff they were shooting into Schilling's ankle is on that list that they wouldn't want uh, uh, people using in baseball. They should see what uh, DJs do to get up in the morning to do radio shows. That's right. They really want to get into something. My don't God, man. Take away our crystal meth and we wouldn't have a show. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, Jim Bunning got up there and was talking about, uh, about the, the modern athlete and what they were doing. I mean, in his day... You know, the, 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 the ball players popped greenies like they were M&Ms. And really? He, he didn't mention that. Somehow yeah. he conveniently forgot about were that. Those, uh, what were those? Are those like uppers or something Yeah, like I mean, you know, pep pills or, you know, uppers. Later, later on, and amphetamines and stuff. I mean, they... He's talking in Jack, Jack Webb dialogue over there. <laughs> yeah, sure, the greenies. You start with the greenies, then you go to the blueies. And before you know it, a baby's dead in the bathtub. You make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like every episode of Dragnet was about. Sure, it starts with a little marijuana. But with a marijuana cigarette. Ends up with a baby in the microwave and a turkey in the bathtub. <laughs> hey, what do you think about the records? Yeah, yeah, good point. I mean, I don't think there's any way they can expunge them unless um, unless these guys come out and say, yes, I took steroids from X to X. I mean, mm. I think we can take I mean, we can use logic to think that Mark McGuire wouldn't have been, you know, wouldn't have hit 580 home runs without them. So I think you can use logic to maybe vote not vote him in the Hall of Fame. Why Why do you think Consenco came out? Because he had numbers. He had close to 500 home runs. That sh should be enough to maybe get you into the Hall of Fame. And he obviously just flushed that all down the toilet. Yeah. Why do you think he would do that? Toward the end, though, I think I think it became kind of obvious that people weren't going to vote him. He was going to be one of these guys who was going to just miss every year by, by 20, 30, 40, not, 50 votes. Not only that, Conseco looks like one of those guys. What do you actually get for being in the Hall of Fame? Do you get Is it a monetary thing you that get a the ring. player gets? Or you, or you, get you get a, a ring. ring. Yeah, okay. Conseco seems a little more interested in the cash, <laughs> and I think he doesn't care about how he's looked at uh, uh, historically in baseball. I think he said, I could write this book. I can make a lot of money. I might blow my chances of getting in the Hall of Fame, but screw it. That ring would have been on eBay in about five Oh, seconds. yeah, the guy has sold all kinds of baseball stuff that he's had. Oh, okay. He's just, he's one of those guys. He doesn't care. Kind of guy who rats money. out all his friends. Rats out his friends, no, that's too. That's great. He's going to have a lot of money, but no that's one right. to share it with. He'll be a lonely guy. He'll be living in Arizona like some kind of schnook. And Jeff, uh, the trucker, he, <laughs> he writes, uh, yeah, newsflash, rock stars do drugs, but no one cares. And yeah, there you go. A lot of Why the kids, baseball? Lot of the the kids idolize the, uh, the rock stars the out there. The children. Oh, can we have any type of adult-oriented entertainment without worrying about every step of the way how it's going to affect the kids? Yeah, just don't tell them. Right. Be like the old days. Just lie to them. Lie to your children. Let us enjoy ourselves. All right, we've got to thank Mike uh, Vaccaro for the New York Post for stopping by. The name of the book, again, sounds like a good read. Emperors and Idiots. Emperors and Idiots about the Red Sox and the Yankees. Mm -hmm. and uh, Awesome. Cool, man. And we're going to be broadcasting live at Bill's Bar in Boston opening day. Lansdowne Street, April 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., New time for the show that day only. That's East Coast time, by the way. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank Bill Burr for stopping by. Did Bill a great always, job filling in for Jim Norton. Thanks. Hanging out with Bill. Yeah, Jimmy. See him uh, tonight. 
Where is he? West Palm Beach. West, West Palm? Palm? The Improv. The Improv. Yeah. West Palm. Go Can I toss a plug in real quick? Sure. I'll be at the uh, Stress Factory in New Brunswick, April 1st and 2nd. April 1st and 2nd. Second, yeah. Stress Factory, New Brunswick. And BillBurr.com, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. BillBurr.com. All right. And uh, Steve? Yeah. Getting videos up this weekend? Yes. Oh, you're wearing your flaming boots? Not today. You should get flaming spats to put on top of them. Really? Yeah. What's a spat? <laughs> you weren't listening today. I was actually doing the new intro with Drew. Professor Anthony uh, told us all what spats oh, were today. I'm so, I'll have to listen to the replay. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> and Monday, <laughs> Monday on the program, will Ozzy show up? Ah, that's the big question. Tune in. Program complete.